It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are here with lots of Microsoft news. We have an official ship date for Windows 11. We also have news about those of you who might still want to run it with incompatible hardware. Panos Panay has a new job. And yes, there's a Surface event coming up. It's all next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 740. Recorded Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. Panos promoted. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Akamai. Akamai is the world's largest distributed edge compute platform to deliver and protect your digital experiences worldwide. Tap into Akamai for its unrivaled intelligence, performance, and scalability. Visit akamai.com slash ww to learn more. And by Compiler, an original podcast from Red Hat discussing tech topics big, small, and strange. Listen to Compiler on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And by Melissa. The U.S. Postal Service processes more than 98,000 address changes every day. Is your customer contact data up to date? Try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, and start playing in the API sandbox 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records cleaned for free at melissa.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yeah, we do it every week. The show we talk about Windows Weekly with Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet blog. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello, Leo. How are you? Good. Good. Good, good. And uh, to her right, Paul Therott of uh, therott.com fame. Hello, Paul. Hello, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, hey here we go. Here we go. It's a show. There is a possible... Uh, possibility that sometime during the show water will rise above Paul's head in which case he will <laughs> well, evacuate. Actually, that can't happen. Uh, <laughs> but what could happen is a tornado would wipe out this house and take me with it. So if you see some kind of a fritzing of the connection, you know, we had a good run. Flash floods or yeah. tornadoes, we had a good run. I'm at the uh, top of a hill, so it probably won't be flash Oh, okay, flooding. good. At, at okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the same thing out here. We try to be on bedrock, so if there's an earthquake, it's not quite so devastating. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's> <laughs> but uh, let's just say tomorrow we won't be doing our normal walk uh, because wow. that river will be swollen no well beyond its means. Do you, so you live near a river? Yeah, it's a creek. Um, Clearly. Yeah. So it's right through the middle of our development. When I say, good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, I'm actually referring to Lower Mukunji Township. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Just I think it's called the the Little Lehigh Crick, and little is spelled I L, -L I L. Little Lehigh Crick. <laughs> so, where the Great Monongahela and Pittsburgh rivers can join, we have geese <laughs> and ducks, and we have a great blue heron. Geeks we also have some weird river rat things that no one's able to quite Ooh. identify. E. Um, but they look like uh, not otters, like uh, muskrats or something. Oh yeah, that's okay then. Not like rat rats. It's lower McCunchy, Leo. Come on. <laughs> Not New York. <laughs> Not New York. Yeah. There may be an upper McCunchy. I don't know. <laughs> We're getting excited. I posted in the uh, Twit Cruise Discord the excursions, the PDF with all the excursions for our Alaska cruise oh. next July. Holy right. cow. Choosing yep. has been really hard. Lisa and I <laughs> kind of put together a oh, tell me, list. Tell me some of them I need to get on this. Oh, yeah, you should because uh, it's – well, the good news is there's a lot of choice. I'm – my right. – one of the ones I really want to do that sounds exciting mm -hmm. is uh, a um, Iditarod-style husky mush across a glacier. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Is there, right? Is there a helicopter wow. one? I'm kind of there's interested. A, there's in one with a helicopter. They helicopter you to the, gr the glacier. I see. Yeah. You want to be Can in I a play helicopter? the Magnum, Magnum P.I. theme song while we fly yeah, there? No, I, don't, I think that's Hawaii. <laughs> uh, let me see. Juno. There's the yeah. Salmon Bake, the Whales and Mendenhall Glacier Trail. There's the Whale Watch, all-inclusive luxury. Bear yeah. Watching. 
Bear watching. No. Yeah. The no, Alpine Zip Line Adventure and Axe Throwing. That's good for yes. you. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've done both of those things. That does sound good. Yeah. How about but not at the same time. Bike no, and not at the same time. <laughs> bike <laughs> and brew glacier view. Like a dicathlon. Oh, that sounds good. You go that on uh, you go and you're going on the Mendenhall Glacier. And then at the visitor area, you will ride along one mile trail through the rainforest. Who knew you could have a rainforest and glacier in the same place? And then sure. you'll travel by van to Merchant's Wharf, an old seaplane hangar in downtown Juneau, and you'll oh. taste award winning beers from microbreweries around Alaska. Mm. But that but the one I was interested in, and I think this is the one you're talking about, dog sledding and glacier adventure by helicopter. Yes. Wow. Mush your own dog sled team across a snow-covered glacier. Can I glacier. shoot an elk from the side of an sure. el helicopter? Is that a thing? <laughs> sure. Sarah Palin's going to come down, hand you a rifle, say, get that one. Sure. Yeah. Me, and, me and Sarah. <laughs> like, you can see uh, Russia from up there. It's going to be great. The Norris <laughs> Glacier. Uh, beautiful heli flight seeing trip over the vast Juno ice field. Uh, and then from here, it all goes to the dogs. You'll land at the dog sledding base on the glacier and learn the tricks of the trade from seasoned veterans of the legendary Iditarod race. Master the all-important commands of hike, gee, and haw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then armed with your new vocabulary, experience the thrill of zipping across a pristine glacier. What could possibly go wrong? Pulled by a team of friendly huskies. Well, well I want to do that. Environmentally correct, at least. Oh, so absolutely. Like Volkswagen diesel or something. Yeah. Overboots are provided. Good Overboots. <laughs> you, may, you may need those. You cannot weigh 250 pounds or more. Uh oh. Or you'll pay an additional surcharge over the published uh -oh. fare. The uh, tour well, operator will endeavor, dog. get this, <laughs> right on the line. The tour operator will be endeavor to be discreet during the weighing process. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a huge concern. And by the way, uh, GoPro sticks or other extendable items not permitted on tour, but you can bring your you can bring your little camera there. I think it's going to be that sounds fun. awesome. It sounds great. Yeah, I cannot <laughs> wait. Yeah, hmm. there's another fantastic. one. Dog sledding by on the Mendenhall Glacier by helicopter. So I don't right. know. I don't. It's going to be a tough choice. Mm -hmm. You can you can you can drive the team or relax in the sled. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> you know I what this, I would uh, pick. Two hundred fifty pounders going. going to be relaxing in the bed. Yeah, relaxing in the yeah. sled. I just, I really, uh, I can't choose. I can't choose. I it's just, right? different. and that's just one, uh, one and one stop. Anyway, wow. if you want to join us, Paul uh, and Stephanie, Please. Lisa, and I will be going on the uh, the uh, beautiful Holland America Eurodom to Alaska, July sixteenth. Actually, it's through the 22nd, something like that. It's a seven-day Alaska cruise. More information at cruise.twit.tv. And I mention this now because I think we just crossed 100 guests, which is which wow. is great. It's going to be a nice group. But I don't. at some point, we're going to say uh, we don't want to get too big because we want everybody to get Paul Therott's autograph. So. <laughs> well, that won't be worth much, but <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um. All right, so I've been stalling, but there is big news in the we have a world lot of news. In the Microsoft world. Holy cow! I know. Yeah. I don't even Finally, know. I don't know where to start. News. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Windows 11, October 5th. Yes. You know, so they gave us a date yesterday, and they said we're going to start rolling it out on October 5th. I don't know if there's going to be any events connected with right. that or if it's just going to be like okay it's october 5th it's starting to roll out on new pcs and here it is you know blog post <laughs> so yep. so you'll be able to buy it on a new pc october 5th does that sound right yeah yes. and it'll start rolling out to people who have newer machines first you know so they're going to stagger the release there'll be an upgrade um, path for windows 10 users right that's right right well eligible Windows 10 users, which we'll get to later in the show. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> um, That's the been one a wild ride. Yeah. No it kidding. has. Yeah. The one surprise in yesterday's announcement, although I have to say I wasn't surprised, and I bet Paul wasn't either. The Android apps and the store thing isn't going to make it in the first cut. Of course it's not. It hasn't even gone to insiders yet, right? And like right. everybody's like, oh, shocking. I'm like, it's not really shocking. It's not ready. We haven't, yet, we haven't right? even seen it yet. 
No. Right. No. I feel so. like, you know, we, we go through this with every release of Windows 10, so this shouldn't have been surprising. Yeah. But as we, you know, know, it's it's September, by the way, right? So it's, it's September right. 1st. So this thing is arriving in a little over a month. Yep. Uh, they need to finalize this thing right now <laughs> because yep. they have to give yep. the final code such as it is to PC bankers who need to blow it onto their computers, who need to ship it out to retailers. That all has yep. to happen before October 5th. Um, and by the way, I mean, when you do the math on this, July to August, September, October, we're talking about a major new release of Windows that just underwent three months of testing. <laughs> three. I mean, it's but, unprecedented. But there's not a lot new. There's not a lot new. It's Windows 10 20H2 with some fancy things. I don't know. Things See, I've been adding up all those rounded corners. And I got to yeah. tell you, there's a lot of them. A lot of rounded corners. Okay. <laughs> Thousands right. of rounded corners. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at, but. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm, again, like everyone's like, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it took that long and has it been tested enough. Guys, you've been testing these features since last year, if you were an insider, right? Like most of these features have been in tests since last year in the dev channel. And then right. they just didn't ship it with 21H1. But you've tested them all pretty much. Yeah. And I even, mean, even you know, the new UI New stuff. snipping I mean, we... tool. Okay. New clock. Right. Those are really only yeah. new in the sense that they're now they're rewriting they're them just, to be reunion yeah. to be whatever they yes. are. Yeah, it, and yeah, I, I, yeah. Right. And that's, that's I more for Microsoft's think, benefit than ours, isn't it? But it's not like we're going to wake up on October fifth and have every single app in Windows be completely redone. Right. I mean, no. this is mm -mm. this is really what um, a Microsoft, Netscape, whomever was talking about the late nineteen nineties. This notion that. Yeah. Windows, in this case, is not just a thing that releases on one day and then remains untouched. It's mm -hmm. an ever-moving target. And, um, you know, <laughs> they may have gotten rid of Windows as a service, but this is it, isn't it, really? I mean, they're, yeah. they're going to yeah. keep updating this thing. I mean, that's the way yeah. the world is today. Yeah. Right, right. I'm not, when I'm saying it's not a big update, I think it's very nice. Like I keep saying, like, I think it's very, looks good. It's been mostly working. You know, the one thing that hasn't been working lately for me is um, it's disconnecting a lot from my Wi-Fi at home, like all the time, oh pretty much. <laughs> and okay. I'm like, oh, why did this just start happening? This wasn't happening all along, but now this is happening and I'm not sure why. Hmm. I don't know if that's, um, yeah, it's hard to tell. I, I can I tell you testing I laptops, although you would have noticed this before. Yeah. Um, there's just some weirdness between certain wireless chipsets and laptops and wireless chipsets and routers. And every yeah. once in a while you yeah. get in, I'll have one where you, you know, you open up the laptop, it comes right on, but the wireless yeah. doesn't connect right away. And sometimes right. you have to right click troubleshoot and it will kind of go through yeah. a thing and then it connects eventually. Yeah. But maybe it's Mine, I've had to, to re I've had to restart the PC most of the time yeah. or disconnect the router. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't have this before. Why is this just starting PC to happen? PC guy eighty eighty eight in the chat room is mentioning something that is a kind of standard debugging thing, which is to turn off power management on the card. Oh, if you go okay. in the device manager, there's a oh, checkbox yeah. that will allow oh, okay. the allow Windows to put the card to sleep, which oh, really? really isn't okay. what you want. I don't know why. No. I guess to extreme battery savings or something. But mm. that is interesting. Mm. That okay. might be worth a check. Just okay. That's good. That's Thanks. kind of a standard. Uh, yeah, that's a good thing to check. That's true. Troubleshooting nice. issue. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, there weren't any big surprises on the rollout announcement to me. Like, I, it's going to be well. over the coming months, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, it's going to be the PCs they think are the most likely to have a great experience, get it first. They'll send you a note in Windows Update and say, hey, guess what? You can get the update now if you want it. But here, oh, Paul, I don't know if you saw this in my story, Paul, but I, I said mm -hmm. to them, okay, say say you're an enterprise and you don't want it rolling out to all your users and they have eligible PCs. So you know what right. they gave me as a statement? This is interesting. They said, okay. um, we're putting that choice in the hands of customers. If you have an eligible Windows 10 device notified through Windows Update, you'll be able to decide if you ever want to move it to Windows 11. So they're going to let you say no. Um yeah, so, it, right? uh, well, everyone everyone who is in this part of the world probably understands that, and by, by that I mean Pennsylvania, um, <laughs> me, <laughs> understands that uh, Microsoft has typically provided blocker tools historically for previous versions of Windows. Now, yeah. this got a little convoluted right. with Windows 10 because they kept updating Windows 10, but it does make yeah. sense to me that they would bring back such a thing. So this will be like a group policy or whatever where... No, so you, this is not... 
they are not going to have a blocking tool. Well, I, I mean, but there'll be some right. method that is something similar, right? In other words, there'll be yeah, some switch yeah. where you can say, we're going to say Windows now 10. built in. Yeah. It yeah. may, no, you it know what it doesn't matter what the think. actual implementation may, is. Yeah. No, maybe I'm being naive about this, but I was thinking, I was thinking it meant we're going to let you as a user or an IT admin say, no, I don't need to even apply a tool. I just don't want this showing up. And no, I don't. We don't well, yes, it. but it, there has to be some right? switch for an IT admin to do that across an environment, yeah. right? So there has to be some, yeah. well, I'll just call it a How policy. How long for do you think you'll be able to defer it? Five right. years. Uh, five years. Nice. Five years, yeah. right? Yeah, because 2025 is how long you can stay on Windows 10. Now, obviously, if when you stick on the Windows 10 cycle, you'll you'll be adhering to whatever that support life cycle looks like. And what that means is, right. although they've never said this, there could be yeah. two more feature updates per year going forward that, you know, whatever that is. I mean, mm -hmm. every version of Windows 10 has its own yeah. support life cycle. And there are big releases and small releases. The bigger ones tend to have uh, long, yeah. well, actually, that's not true. The smaller ones tend to have the longer support cycle. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll mm -hmm. see. Yeah. I just thought that was the one, change. if I was going to say surprise, I was like, uh, kind of surprising. Yeah. I don't know. No, also. It, but it makes sense why, when, you, when you hear it. You're like, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Okay, sure. October, why October 5? Because people were guessing right. the date, right? And so I looked at a calendar. I'm like, okay, you know why it's October 5? Because the next weekend is Columbus Day. There's always big mm -hmm. sales around Columbus Day. And it's in some places where the holiday season kind of kicks off in the U.S. at least. Um, so I'm like, yeah, yeah. that might be this why, was, right? This was the latest they could make it and hit the holiday selling season, I right? think, right? In yeah. any meaningful so way, too. right, for PCs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's the little, that's, really it, what's happening here, right? I mean, yeah, because if yeah. this wasn't so important, um, I, why wouldn't you just wait? Like, what's the rush? Um, yeah, yeah. But I think it is important. And I've, I've got a little bit of information about PC Maker uh, sales, you know, PC sales over in the past quarter mm -hmm. later on that might play into this a little okay. bit. Cool, okay. Yeah, so there we have it. October 5th. <laughs> There's so many questions. So many questions. I know. I know. I know. Is, under the hood, is there anything really substantively new in 11? Or is it, as I have been thinking, uh, just a skinning of 10, essentially? I know the well, new apps, but that's really from, from, not... Yeah, so... Technically speaking, it is Windows 10, right? Okay. That's fair yeah. with this new skin. It's However, a skinned Windows 10. Th this stand that you're <laughs> taking on the hardware requirements, which we'll discuss very soon, yeah. I think is is really related to the, the the notion in Windows 10 that to for everyone to be secure, we all had to be on the same version. But there was no real enforcement of that, right? Mm -hmm. And right. what they're saying now is we're going to take that concept, but we're going to prov provide like a hardware backing to it. Because all of these components, and it's not just 8th gen processors, it's not just TPM 2.0, it's other things too, like um, uh, the secure uh, boot process and all that stuff. You know, the idea here is that these PCs need to be secure from the moment they're sitting there dead until you turn them on until Windows is fully running and every everywhere in between. And you really can't do that truly securely unless you have that level of hardware support. So, so really that's the that's, kind of line in the sand. That's the big deal about 11 is this new requirement yes. this eighth generation or later and tpu requirement um mm -hmm. now as steve pointed out yesterday in a way this this kind of bifurcates windows again because you've got yep. apparently a lot of people on windows 10 still right uh, they won't have these security benefits but i guess well actually you, i mean some of them will right i mean i, I you know it's, it's kind of hard to say so my belief is that we're going to see the same updates go out to both systems because it's the same underlying operating system, right? right. So whenever whatever cumulative update, blah, 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 whatever it's called in November, will ship for Windows 10 and Windows 11 and be the same update. It, why it will be the same. It's sure. literally going to be exactly the same thing. Sure. And um, there are advantages to being on Windows 11 to those people who have that newer hardware. Um, but, you know, when it's not... You know, I talk, so at some point I'd like to go into this a little more deeply, but I talked to people from two PC makers in the past week and uh, about this stuff, because one of the questions I had was about if we're not all secure, is the whole ecosystem secure? And I think these, 
exceptions where people who are enthusiasts are going to bring older hardware into Windows 11 aren't really going to mess everything up for anyone else. But the the Windows 10 versus Windows 11 debate is is a big one because there are literally over a billion people, 1.3 billion, I think, running Windows 10 today. So how does that impact all of us if such a huge audience is still on this previous generation? And the answer I got, and this is true of both people, they, they both said exactly the same thing. Windows 10 is great. <laughs> so it's fine if they stay in Windows 10. It's still great. Um, the big difference now between this upgrade and the one when we went to Windows 10 is that the thing we came from before was a piece of garbage. Windows 8 was terrible. So there was no good story where we Microsoft could say, hey, it's fine to stay in Windows 8. I mean, they could have said that and everyone would have laughed. You know, the, the majority of the user base at that time was on Windows 7, not Windows 8. And Windows 7 had some security issues, you know, compared to the more modern operating system. So when you shift things forward, it having two versions of Windows that are essentially the same under the hood is actually... Not that horrible. And they, they've set this thing in place where there's a literal timeline on when we'll all be as secure as we can be because of these hardware advances by saying that Windows 10 will now only be supported for five more years. There's a, there is a line in the sand. Yeah. Okay. You know? Okay. Um, and why eighth generation? Is, are, are those more secure than seventh generation? They're one more secure, Leo. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, That's no not I, I, I suspect that has something to do with the proliferation of TPM 2.0. Uh, okay, so really TPM systems, is you know. the key. Yeah, it, it, is a co it is a coincidence, but it is true to state that Windows, or sorry, <laughs> Windows 8, um, the eighth generation core processors is where Intel gave us that extra set of cores, right? That's when... The U series chips, which is the mainstream chips, as most chips out in the world, went from being dual core to quad core. That's a big thing. Um, you know, we know that the Skylake security issues that was Gen six was previous to seven, so it's not exactly that. I was kind of wondering. I forgot which was which in the beginning when this was first happening, but it turns out that was six. So it's not that. But uh, there, you know, there are subtle advantages to eight, and then as you move forward from eight to 10 to 11 or however we went exactly. Um, again, from a security standpoint, it's probably pretty subtle. But again, it's that combination of factors. It's not just the chipset itself, the microprocessor mm -hmm. or the SOC. It's the it's all the security chipset. Uh, yeah, stuff. you know, uh, I asked Steve, well, is it Meltdown Inspector? He said, not really. That's that's the same in, in, in a generation well, eight and later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that stuff's been, yeah, that, those mitigations are just those in are, place. Those it's come yeah, from it's not like 11 really. introduces a new level of them or something. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really think it's about, I think it has a lot more to do with TPM and Secure Boot and whatever other low-level mm -hmm. chipsets they're talking about. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, 64-bit, not that, you know, 7th Gen wasn't 64-bit, but they're drawing that line as well. There's a bunch of things that are kind of happening together with Windows 11, where, you know, again, you flash forward a few years. We'll see what the uptick looks like, too. I mean, in two years, we might be having a different conversation. What if, and who knows how this is going to go, but what if the majority, this will never happen, but I mean, what if the majority of the user base upgraded to Windows 11 faster than they did to Windows 10? I don't actually see that happening, but we'll see. You know, we have to wait and see what happens. Okay. And there are, you know, lots of laptops announced to be Windows 11 ready and some, in fact, with Windows right. 11 will come with Windows 11 after October 5th. I just in the short amount of time since Microsoft announced TPM 2.0 as a requirement for Windows 11, I have seen PC makers pointing out that their PCs have TPM 2.0. This was right. something that really wasn't discussed all that much before. I don't think anyone really thought that much about it. Not that these companies weren't pushing security. Of course they are. But um, all of a sudden it's like, oh, by the way, you know, this is, mm -hmm. we got it. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, of course, yeah, it's 2021. <laughs> And didn't didn't Asus or one of them pushed out some kind of an update to their PC so that it turned on TPM yeah. for users? It could right? be, sure, In sure, some sure, machines, sure. It's turned, you can turn it, it's normally turned off right. and you can turn it on in BIOS. And right. Asus, by the way, is one of those companies that had pointed that mm -hmm. out in the laptop I just reviewed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, 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 good, 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 all right, okay. <laughs> just trying to wrap so my head around. Corners. 
So you get rounded corners and a little more security. There you go. Well, but that's, you don't even really get a little more security. <laughs> but but Microsoft's kind of using it well, as a, as a carrot to pull people into a more secure yeah. Yeah. platform. Because I don't you know, Windows but, 11 isn't more secure inherently than Windows 10. No, right. Well, right. well, is it though? I don't know. They they've talked up a lot of the things they're building in security wise. You know, I'm having trouble discerning if any of these things are real. Because yeah, yeah. I feel like, wait, didn't we already have that? Or like, can't you already do that? And I think I think what they're trying to do is say it's going to be more secure, more performant, more reliable, like they do with every Windows release. And and there will be things, I'm sure, that will it's, fall into those three buckets, right? It's prettier. It's simpler. It's more modern. Yeah. Um, there are downsides yeah. to each of those things, too, by the way. You know, yeah, some we right. did a little um, uh, Windows 11 webinar last week, I guess it was, and someone asked about mm -hmm. the ransomware protections. And I had it in my head. I I distinctly remember Microsoft mentioning something about ransomware protection with Windows 11. And I thought, well, you know, and I wasn't really able to answer the question, but while we had moved on to something else, I looked it up. And if you look at the UI for ransomware protection, which is in the Windows security app, it's actually 100% the same as Windows 10. The difference, again, is the hardware, because on Windows 11, you're guaranteed to have the hardware backing for that, those features, which exist or persist down to the firmware. And, you know, PC makers are shipping, you know, self-healing firmware. And, of course, Microsoft is selling you on OneDrive because that's a way to get back all your documents if you have a ransomware attack and it succeeds. Um, but fundamentally, as far as Windows is concerned, I don't actually think there is a technical difference in its ability okay. to handle ransomware. I just think the hardware is guaranteed to be as good as it can be. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Now, the thing I thought was really interesting this week and also confusing, and I guess Microsoft did a briefing with Tom Warren was there. Were you, did you, either of you get well, the Well, there was individual briefings is how they did Okay. Yeah. Uh, about the fact that, oh, and by the way, we're going to let people install Windows 11 on incompatible yeah. hardware as well. <laughs> And then they said, so this is <laughs> but you may not get security updates. That's unclear. But you might. Yeah, but you might. So <laughs> this is the problem. And I, I think, I, yeah. So this is, I, we structured the notes in kind of a good, the bad, and the ugly way. But unfortunately, the complexity of this topic means we're going to have to jump around. Because <laughs> yeah. what you just described was like the bad and the ugly in one thing. And I think Mary Jo and I have arrived at a place where we, we think we know how it's really going to go down. But there has been some real miscommunication on Microsoft's part. Um, Good. This is what we come here for, <laughs> is clarification. Yeah. Because it's not, so who, it's very wanna, confusing. Who wants to, who's going to tackle it? How, how do we get into this topic? Um, I'll, I'll just stand so, back and let you guys. <laughs> yeah. So here's yeah. what happened. Microsoft did right. some briefings um, and talked about, okay, we told you we might relax some of the guidelines around TPM and which processors will get Windows 11 and which won't. During the briefing, they also said something which wasn't in their blog post, but they basically said, and by the way, there's going to be this loophole. So if you're a tech savvy IT pro kind of person and you know how to install things from an ISO or the media creation tool, if you have an ineligible PC, you're still going to be able to put Windows 11 on it. But if you do, it'll be in an unsupported state. So as soon as I heard that, I'm like, wait, so what does that mean? What does unsupported state mean? And it took a while to get an answer. But um, when the answer came in over the weekend, it was so vague and weird. It was, okay, they won't. They won't be entitled to get updates through Windows Update. These updates well, may or may not include right. security and driver updates. Yeah, so... <laughs> okay. Now, that, what? what you just <laughs> described, which, by the way, is accurate, is ludicrous, right? Not from you, but right. from Microsoft. Like, that's a ludicrous assertion. So... It is. You already have, like, two levels of obfuscation here, right? There's the public blog post that went out that anyone can read. It says, yeah. we evaluated this stuff. We're going to let in a couple of esoteric high-end 7th gen chipsets for some reason. I, apparently, they're super secure now, um, but not all the mainstream stuff. All, right. Also, by the way, the one that's in Surface Studio too. weird coincidence. Um, yeah. Okay, fine. That's fine. So we're, we're taking that hard stand. Now, what's not in the blog post, like Mary Jo said, is we, we, are, we know that enthusiasts, and this is a tiny percentage of these, that better be popcorn, buddy, um, <laughs> is going to want to install this thing. And so we're going to let them right. do that. They can download the ISO or they can stay in the insider program and just keep getting insider bills. I'm like, okay, yeah. fantastic. Now yeah. that very fact right there tells me 
you're getting security updates and cumulative updates because that's the stuff that's delivered through the Insider program. That's part of it. Like that makes sense to me. So on Friday last week, I wrote this post where I was like, Microsoft finally got it right. I, I can't believe it. And I was going to write a, a Saturday morning. My intention was to write a thing like basically congratulate them for five years of miscommunication, but they finally got it right. But then these reports started coming out, you know, Mary Jo, PC yeah. Mag, uh, The Verge went back to Microsoft and asked for clarifying statements on what this meant. And what they said was what Mary Jo said, not that you won't be able to get security updates, not that you right. won't be able to get cumulative updates through Windows Update, but that you may okay. not get those. Right. And that to me is squirmy legalese designed at yeah. setting up a situation where Microsoft has never, con never said explicitly that they will support that thing. Because once you do that, you set yourself up for literally mm -hmm. supporting that thing. And I yeah. think that's what they're doing. It, it is reminiscent of the policy they have with Windows 7 or newer product keys, where mm -hmm. if you have a retail key, you can apply it in Windows 10 and now in Windows 11, and it will activate and it works fine. Microsoft in 2015 said, we will allow you to do that for one year. And then they never discussed it again, but it has always worked. And I think they are taking the same approach here. Obviously, I, I, I mean, this think logically, folks. There is not a chance on earth that Microsoft would deny a security update to anyone running Windows 11. That makes no sense. It goes against the right. entire point of Windows 11. So they can say whatever they want to say, but you as a Windows 11 enthusiast running on unsupported hardware, I, I can't guarantee it, right? I mean, I can't. Right. Just like Microsoft won't. But it is inconceivable to me that they would not give you the security updates at the very least. I think they're going to give you yeah. everything. But here's you know, the thing, so even if they don't, oh, yeah. I was just going to let me scroll quick. No, go ahead. There yeah. will be hundreds of third party apps that will do this for you. Mm -hmm. Stardock will release something, no doubt about it. There will mm -hmm. be just IT admins who write PowerShell scripts or whatever it is. Every month, those security updates are available as standalone downloads. It's a pain in the butt to go find them and apply them to your yeah. computer, but there will be automated ways for that to happen. You won't have to do it. I think it's going to be in, mm -hmm. in Windows Update, but. I think worst case scenario, it, it, it'll, it will work. So they're not right. going to artificially guess. prevent that. I don't, if they, if they did, well. <laughs> here's why this would be, yeah. they could, they could, right? right? They could, but right. here's why they won't, I think. Number one, Windows 10, Windows 11 under the covers, even when you look at the about on this operating system, it says Windows 10 20 H2, 21 H2, right? <laughs> does That's it still it say says. that? That's yeah. funny. So, um, that means they're going to be doing security updates and driver updates for 21H2. So they could, yeah. if they really wanted to be spiteful, withhold those. But if you think about this, what kind of outcry would there be in the right. in the IT Pro community and the security community that, hey, Microsoft could be doing this right now and making everyone secure in the That's entire crazy. ecosystem. But they're not going to do it because they want not to punish to the people who are running it on, on ineligible PCs, right? The, the engineering effort that this will require is incommensurate with the whatever perceived, what's the benefit of it? I mean, it's you no want benefit. those guys. Yeah. I no. want you running the latest security update all the time, of course. Yeah. And that's what benefits right. the if whole thing. If they're asserting that Windows 11 is about security, then that would be nuts. I know. Right? It's, it's, right? Well, Microsoft know. can be nuts. So I, I don't want to, we can't state, you know, you know no. this is absolutely going to happen. But, you know, applying common sense to it. And again, common sense doesn't always apply with Microsoft. But just mm -hmm. looking at the history of things, we well, this is a company that has shipped Windows 10 security updates for the UK medical establishment years after Windows 10 went out of support. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't, you know, if there's a zero day of some kind or whatever it is, like you, you can't yeah. as the platform maker, just ignore that. And it yeah. would be harder to f fix it. So they couldn't get him to slip. Oh, why would you, why would you do a thing about that? That's crazy. Now you have to think I'm going to be, it sounds like I'm being cynical, but I'm not. <laughs> a big part <laughs> right. of the reason they're doing Windows 11 and making a set of criteria that you have to adhere to to use it is because they're annoyed that people, they and the OEM partners are annoyed that people are keeping PCs for a long time right. and just keep updating the operating system. Well, they <laughs> don't Sorry. want that. Well, stop making them they so good. They don't want that. <laughs> That's they good want for you to buy yeah. new PCs. Sorry. This is why, this is a oh, big, so big the other thing, reason for the Windows The other thing 11. that's really it important, is. though, is... Yeah, you've um, said this you know, all for, along. I can't deny it, yeah. But normal normal users are never going to know. Everything we just talked about, um, typical no, right. normal <laughs> mainstream users are never going to notice anything we just no. said. 
They're going to keep they getting won't. Windows 10 updates if they have unsupported hardware. They, yeah. they could have a TPM chip on their PC that's not enabled. They'll never even know. Like, that's mm -hmm. the sad reality. Right. Like, it's just what's going to happen. And yeah. re realistic, look, I, we're, we're enthusiasts. We always want the new shiny bobble. I get that. I'm, oh, my God, it's a disease. I have it. But <laughs> the reality is Windows 10 is excellent. <laughs> so yeah. if you're going to get keep using that thing for five more years, I, it's, we have not sent you to a personal hell here. It's not Windows 8. It's right. This is okay. And all those app updates that are coming down the pike, whatever they are, they're you're all happening on Windows 10. Yeah. Yep. Right. So you're right. still going to have like a fresh thing going on. Yeah. I, I, this so is, correct yeah. me if it's I'm wrong. It's not a huge deal. All you're not getting is a centered start menu and rounded corners. Yep. And maybe <laughs> at some point an Android store in the Microsoft. Well, and, yeah. But and there, there that, are certain. Wait, isn't that even going to come to Windows 10? I thought they said it was. Is no? it? Which one? The Which app, one? Android? Because the app oh, store no, is I, an app, right? Yeah, but I the bet that's that's going to be it. Yeah, but Windows. They might put the, the, this is there's an Android, Android support oh, wait. subsystem. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. There so has to be the Android subsystem. Yeah. You're right. No, I, I, the, yeah. the only minor things that Windows 10 won't users won't get are like that refresh paint app because that's a built-in app, right? Or the yeah. I know like the new stipping tool or whatever like minor things. Um, I, I, the big appeal of Windows 10 to an average user and, and we're really stretching the limit here is. You know, the enhanced visuals, which I, I think are pretty. I think most people would probably mm -hmm. like. Oh, it's nice. In fact, a lot of Mac um, users, yeah. I'm hearing from a lot of Mac users saying, oh, now I yeah. can use Windows, which is. Sure. It sure. says a lot about Mac users. I mean, that's I about, you know, the Android apps. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's kind of it, isn't it? I mean, yeah. uh, it yeah. runs all the same apps. You know? Right. Right. Um, we're going to take a little break. You, when you say that Stardock will almost certainly provide a utility that will give you the updates, you say that with some knowledge because a certain <laughs> a certain no, no. person. I don't know mm -hmm. what to do with that. I do want to mention sure. that, that Brad Sams is now yep. working at Stardock. He left Petri. He's uh, he's moved on. That bastard. As of today. <laughs> yep. And That's and true. he's and and he's going to be in charge of making it sure that Windows 11 is possible, updates are possible on Windows 10 machines. <laughs> well, uh, he something. is in fact going to be overseeing their Windows software stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I yeah. can't say we haven't discussed this. But congratulations I, I to, no, nice. to to Brad. Are you? What are you going to do with First Ring Daily? I'm going to kill myself later. No, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> so no, he's um, he's going to keep doing that. He'll keep actually. doing that. So good, he's going to, he'll good, maintain good. a little presence. Good. Uh, good. 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 <laughs> it, yeah. And is he taking the rabbit suit with him? <laughs> Clippy. Clippy's gone with Brad to Stardock. Right, right. It's okay. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Akamai. Oh, I don't have to tell you about Akamai. I, I don't, hope I don't. It's the world's largest distributed edge compute platform. If you would like to deliver extraordinary customer experiences and run code at the edge, Akamai is it. I mean, they have... Ten times the location of the nearest competitor, over 4,000 global locations. 4,000, which means you're always closer to your end user with Akamai, which significantly cuts down on latency. Whether it's for an app, a website, uh, content, Akamai greatly improves the customer experience. They'll get the, 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 the apps, the sites, the content, the video they need without lag, without interruption, without latency, even during unexpected traffic spikes. Because you're closer to the edge. Prepare for spikes in demand. Optimize resources to provide the best experience for your customers. You, you will be amazed at Akamai's unparalleled performance. And what's beautiful is you'll always be just one network hop away from 85% of the world's internet users. Now, I think you probably already all know this. I certainly thought all along, yeah, that's the premium product, but at the premium price, right? Well, here's the thing. Even with its unrivaled intelligence, performance, and scalability, Akamai, and this really <laughs> was kind of like, wow, that's interesting, is comparatively priced. And because limits are set per request, you can be sure your workload will scale no matter the size of your user base. And of course, being serverless means you'll see decreased overhead at origin too. Application architects get the flexibility to scale enterprise applications with Akamai Edge Workers. With Edge Workers, your development teams can focus on building. You let Akamai take care of the challenges of scaling globally. It's that's the uh, kind of the fundament, one of the fundamental precepts of of coding, right? Uh, 
Build it first. Don't worry about optimizing. And with Akamai, you don't have to. You 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 know you get you'll get scalability. It just happens. And because Akamai empowers you to deploy serverless code at the edge, you won't experience the headaches of increased traffic or origin. You know, hammering your servers or the overheads that go with it. You get to innovate right at the edge. Your logic, your functions, they're deployed and active at the nearest proximity to your end users. Man, just imagine what that does for latency, for reliability, for performance. You're getting the best, fastest end user experience no matter where you are in the world. And just, you know, as an example, it, it's simple to build right at the edge using JavaScript, which means you can innovate in real time. Low latency access to data for custom code at the edge. And Akamai can optimize your API traffic delivery for edge applications. And all of this for the same price that you're already paying is pretty amazing. I know everybody knows Akamai and knows the reputation, probably because everybody uses Akamai. They're trusted by the biggest brands in the world. And with 10 times the locations globally, you get the fastest customer experience out there. There's no one comes close. So check out the Akamai website. Learn more about edge computing. Have a conversation with them. You'll, you'll enjoy it. They're smart. They're savvy. And they, can, and they can really explain the difference they can offer. And I think you will be very surprised, as I was, by how competitive the pricing is. It's really, you know, it kind of makes you go, wow, I could have had an Akamai. Build closer to your end user with Akamai, the world's largest distributed edge compute platform. Visit Akamai, A-K-A-M-A-I, Hawaiian for cool and intelligent. Akamai.com slash WW to learn more. A-K-A-M-A-I dot com slash WW. Please, please, please use the WW on that. I know you're smart. You don't have to. You know that. But if you do, then they know you saw it here and that we makes a big difference to us. Akamai dot com slash ww and by the way tip of the hat to akamai thank you for supporting windows weekly we really appreciate it we said microsoft has the capability of denying you from updates they're actually now denying incompatible yeah. hardware if you're a windows Which, insider right help yeah. me understand this one I, maybe there's a nuance here i'm missing is is this no. only people in the dev channel maybe because literally nope. on friday they said I know. <laughs> this is something my wife always does. You said is, <laughs> <laughs> which is very effective, um, that they could stay on the Windows Insider program and, and I know. keep Windows 11. And then three yeah. days later, they're like, hey, thanks for testing. Uh, see you later. Just <laughs> I mean, kidding. Rather an abrupt <laughs> end to that little relationship. Am yeah. I missing something? I know. Right. No, you're not. In June, when Microsoft first announced Windows 11... <sighs> They did say that when Windows 11 was generally available, people in the Insider program who were running it on ineligible hardware would be kicked off. They said that would, would happen at general availability, which, as far as I understand, is October 5th. But it's actually right. started happening this week. It's happening to people in dev and beta, as far as I can tell. And, okay. yeah, it totally negates what they said on background last week, which was besides using the ISO and the media creation tool, if you stay in the insider program, you can keep running it on in ineligible hardware. So this is the exact opposite of what they said last week. Um, now, the other thing worth pointing out here is uh, it's not like you're going to get a Windows update that puts you back on Windows 10. You, you, that's something no. you have to handle yourself. Yeah, But, but you that do. also suggests... You know, I, there are probably people out there right now dealing every day with that bizarre pop-up that happens in Windows 7 when you still use it. So whatever the last build of Windows 11 was, and we should talk about that a little bit because we did get a new build last Thursday, uh, that's almost certainly the last build they're going to get through the Insider program. But if you stayed on that, and they did allow people into the Windows Insider mm -hmm. program in the future because God knows you know, how that's going to change once Windows 11 mm -hmm. ships or if at all. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, would, I, wouldn't they be able to keep going? Right. I don't understand. Right. That's or a good point. Or download the I ISO then. And, yeah, I yeah. don't know. I, no, I, I just, I'm thinking about it in real time here. So I, people I are, are they getting, how are, how, so some people are getting booted off or no? It's just something there. No, well, the, they are. Yeah. They so are. If, and when it happens. Windows update, you, actually, if you look at my website, I have a photograph okay. or a screenshot of it. So, um, yeah. it is the, 
the article that's right. called <laughs> Thanks for Testing Windows 11, Now Leave. Um, <laughs> this is a shot taken by a, someone on Twitter. But it is a, in other words, you go to Windows Update, and instead of a check for updates button, you get a message that says your PC does not meet the minimum hardware requirements for Windows 11. Your device is not eligible to join the Windows Insider program on Windows 11. Please install Windows 10 to participate in the Windows Insider program in the release. This sounds program. like a bug because you're already yeah. in the Windows. You're already running Windows 11. Well, it is fair to say, you know, back in, I guess it was late June or whenever the first uh, public release, maybe early July, whenever it was, Microsoft said, look, for now, we are going to let people with unsupported hardware in because we're going to do that testing, which I now feel was just bogus, right? But whatever. So some, there have been people who have gotten, what are we on now, this eighth, ninth build, whatever it is, they've been participating for over two months. We'll call it two months. Let's say two months. And um, now, as of today, <laughs> they're starting to get this message like, yeah, you're not, uh, you're not welcome anymore. Thanks. Thanks for all your and, hard work. And what do you do to get out? You you have to reinstall. You have to. You have to put yeah, Windows 10 on. You have to install Download like the from Windows scratch. ISO. There's no yep. rollback. Yep. Yeah. No, but remember, this feels the, like I, an error. This does not feel that intentional. No, they're they're saying this is well, correct. They, oh God. They I think, said it. I, honestly, I, I, the the point here is that if you're in the Windows Insider program, you should at least be tactical enough to handle what you just described, which is find the ISO, blast Windows 11 off, clean mm -hmm. install from Orbit. Get your drivers, you know, if you're PC maker. Yeah, but that's a lot of time and effort. It's not that you don't know how to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I... They I needed like, to be clear I do this all the time. I, I, to this. me, this is like a... Yeah. I know, but they needed to really be clear I, that you shouldn't be doing I think doing they should have warned people. They should have right, warned they people. Given, We're going to Like last out. week, well, they the should have said, yeah. we're going to boot you. We're going to boot you next exactly. week if you don't exactly. do this. Or they right. could have done that today. Hey, by the way, they could have this message. You're going to get yeah. updates from now, but as of October 5th or whatever date you want to say, I don't know why they're doing this. It it's emphasizes crazy. what everybody's always said, which is you should not be doing this on a production system. But I have to point right. out, many of us do. Mm -hmm. It's not at all I don't unusual. know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So, uh, I mean, I'm just yeah. kind of stunned by this. Uh, it seems yeah. arbitrary. I I it know. also... We know that it's compatible because they said you can install it from the ISO <laughs> later down the road. You know. so, they've been running you know. it. They've been running Windows 11 this whole time, right? Can like I throw they know a, they can. Um, a hypothetical at you and you can say this is nuts? I have a yeah. hypothetical. <laughs> there's a there's um at the conference room in the conference room there's a there's a little wall and on one side is the engineers who say it's completely mm -hmm. compatible. You could run it. What are you talking about? On the other side, there's the marketing people saying, yeah, but we really want to push people to buy new PCs this fall. Mm -hmm. And right. the messaging has to be very clear that the old PCs aren't going to run it. But the engineers say, but but it, but they but they do run it. No, no, no. But you don't understand. The messaging has to be clear mm -hmm. that they don't run it. Yeah. So and it, is that what's going on? Is this kind of... Well, okay. First of all, I just I I, I, I I guess throw a little nuance into this, and this is unlike me to give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt. But let's just at least say this out loud: the hardware requirements for Windows 11, with regards to security, are well intentioned, and do set up Windows for a more secure future. So I appreciate that at some point you have to take this hard line in the sand. You know, it, it's 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 a hard thing. Apple does this very nonchalantly. Microsoft comes to this very difficultly. So. That they're doing this at all, I think, is a is a good thing, even though there's going to be some short-term pain. Now, a lot of people will disagree with me on that. That's fine. The issue I have with this is, this is a tiny number of people. This, In mm -hmm. fact, the thing that bugs me the most about this is for them to send this message to that group is probably no harder than the thing I said they would never do, which is stop security updates from coming to this group. I, I don't understand... Look, here's one thing they could do. Let these people run it and just ignore all of their unreliability feedback because you don't matter because you're unsupported. That would be fine. I don't understand doing this. It worked for two months. It doesn't they work. They should now. never I, have it, let him in in the first place if this was the plan. By the way, here's the yeah. tweet from Brandon LeBlanc. Right. The senior mm -hmm. program manager on the Windows Insider program team. We communicated. We, can I read this in the voice it should be read in? We <laughs> communicated this would be the case back in the blog post on June 24th. We told so, you. He, that's Not true, exactly, though. Oh. No. They said, they okay. said at, when it became available to the mainstream, they would be kicked out. Um, so it's a little earlier than they said. 
So here's the problem with what Leo's about to do, because one thing Microsoft is kind of infamous for is changing these blog posts after the fact. Without even mentioning <laughs> oh, so them. going through it's meaningless because sure. who knows what it really said. When well, that's it what came I'm out. saying. Like they, they could. No, they wouldn't change. do that. Uh, they literally do that all the time. It's happened. Let's just say it's happened. Yep. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I okay. I, I it's, feel look. so. I I feel like insiders knew this would happen yeah. at some point. All they needed to do was give them a heads up, like they have been doing about, hey, if you don't, if you want to keep testing Windows 11, get out of the dev channel. They've been telling them this for two weeks. Why couldn't they have told them also? And we're going to boot you out of the Windows 11 program if you have you know, ineligible hardware, right? The, the other the other issue I have. Look, uh, this is arguably inarguably a small audience. Relative yeah, to the one hundred billion, it is. I, I, we, I think we everyone understands that. But on the other hand, you've got enthusiasts who are your most vocal supporters taking the time out to install these builds and test them and blah blah blah, whatever. A lot of them, if they're smart, that, that's the wrong term because I don't do this myself. But like Leo said, you should be doing this on non-essential, non-production yeah. hardware. So what does that mean? It means yeah. a second PC you have sitting around, maybe it's a couple of years old, but you want to stay up on Windows. 11 now, and now they're saying, no, you're not going to be allowed to do that. What are they hurting? <laughs> like, what what, <laughs> what are they doing wrong? Yeah. This makes yeah. it seem like you're doing something wrong. It's punitive. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't a good look. Bad. I feel like we say yeah. that a lot, but it wasn't a good look. Oh, my God. We've, we've gone through three stages of bad looks just <laughs> since Friday. <laughs> You know, <laughs> what, do you, what do you um, think about my contention that marketing really is, yeah. that's really what this is about, trying to sell I think pieces? I, but again, I totally right? agree with And you. the engineers are saying, but it works. I mean, yeah. I think, right, but it's that security thing again. I, in other words, if but look, even we that's can marketing. Talk about it's not that it, it's just that we want to, we want, we, we want to encourage people to be more secure, I guess, or to buy hardware Guys, that's listen, more secure. In, in 1990, Eight. There was a Microsoft product called Windows NT 5.0. It was the reason I started the super site for Windows. I was so exciting, excited that they were going to finally merge the NT and the 9X code bases, which they didn't do. And if you need any indication of the time at which marketing took over in Windows, it was when they renamed that thing to Windows 2000, which they did, I think, in September, October over that year. <laughs> um, the, and, and, you know, you have to put up with that silly boot screen that says Windows 2000 powered by NT technology uh, for one version, and it just goes away. And that that's that's the that was the last time the engineers had any say in anything related to public facing anything. So I I, I can't you know I just <laughs> we've been dealing with this. How long ago was that? Twenty uh, was it the year after my son was born? So like a year my son was born. So like twenty that's like twenty three years ago, right? Yeah basic math. I know how old my son is, sort of. Um, <laughs> you know, that's the world. I have, that's, to, I have to do the math every time. <laughs> Just so you know. It's like Henry had a birthday yeah. and I'm going, how old is he? 94? He's, what, 27? How did that happen? My, my wife delights in the fact that at certain times of the year, she's a year and a half younger than me. Not, <laughs> you know, oh, based it. on just numbers. <laughs> um all right. I mean, there's no point in complaining about it. This is this is just the way. Well, oh, I is. disagree. This is my only point is to complain about it. I, 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 I don't. <laughs> what you live for. It. No, Do you I think mean, they're going to change it though? I don't. No. I don't think they can go back now and be like, okay, just kidding. We're going to let you stay in the program. Yeah. yeah. I just look. I uh, the needs of the many and all that kind of stuff. I get it, but I, I just it's tough because it's enthusiasts and these are the people who care the most about the product and the company. Yeah. And Microsoft has really given them a bunch of middle fingers over the past few days. And I, it, it's, and I, yeah, Brandon is right. They did sort of communicate this, whatever. I get that. But it's just, you said it, I, you know, they should have, there should have been some warning. Hey, remember when we said yeah. that was going to happen? It is going to happen. Well, in fact, it's going to happen in two weeks. They said it would we happen when to... general availability was. So right. that's yeah. October 5th. So right. they're doing it a month early, as people yeah. have pointed out in, the t in that tweet uh, thread. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah, you said it, but you said, but you didn't say it. This you didn't tell. You know, they never say anything correctly. We got to first acknowledge that this is a part <laughs> of the company, especially that cannot communicate to save their lives. So the fact that 
they allow the insider team to communicate communicate anything about hardware requirements for Windows 11 or support life cycles was Microsoft's first mistake. But I, I they've backtracked so many times just in a week on what they've told people like us. And by the way, mm -hmm. not to harp on this too much, but on a personal level, we've gone through Microsoft not helping us do our jobs to Microsoft actively screwing us over and making us look like idiots because we <laughs> report what they said and then they can come back and say, yeah, we never said that, you know, yeah. which is amazing, but that's true, right? Because there were a bunch of us that heard them say this in a briefing and uh, in various briefings, but now they can be like, yeah, it's not in the blog post. So I, I don't know what your problem is. I think it all comes, I said this to Paul today, I, it all comes back to the fact they knew when they were going to give us the list of processors that would work with Windows 11, that this was going to be problematic. So when they first told us about this back in June, right. they, they really whitewashed it. They're like, yeah, you know what? It's just going to be like most processors are going to be fine and it, a subset of processors aren't going to work. Okay, they wouldn't give us more details. Then a week later, here's the list of what works. Here's what the list of what doesn't. Oh, wait, we're going to change that list. Okay, now we're changing it again. Now we're going to give you a loophole, right? It just kept changing. Yeah. And I'm like, they knew from the, I, I contend, they knew from the beginning what was going to work, what wasn't, and they wanted to try to soften the blow by by really um, rolling this by out. By a series over of miscommunications. <laughs> so <laughs> no, just that softens like, the blow already. Let's, yeah. give, them a, let's give them a soft thing at the beginning. Because we don't want to hurt, we don't want to hurt the Windows 11 launch like on June 24th or whatever it was. Okay, now let's give them a little bit of bad news. Now let's give them more so, bad by news. By the way. Okay, now, so, right. <laughs> a, a, a key part of this conversation should be something that we don't know which is what is the percentage of each of these generation processors out in the marketplace? This yeah. is something I asked the two PC makers I spoke to recently, and neither one of them knew, which surprised me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then I thought about it, and you know, the truth is PC makers ship products, and they can track. They obviously know how many they sell. They know which ones are successful, which aren't, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, they have some insight into usage through people maybe using their support apps or whatever it is. Maybe they get extended warranties or whatever. But the truth is, that connection between you and the PC maker kind of, you know, goes down to nothing over time. And yeah. there are people out there using some ancient HP or Lenovo or whatever PC. Mm -hmm. And that company probably just has no idea, you know. Right. And it's on a fifth or sixth or seventh gen processor if it's Intel or whatever. And I, that's honestly to have a coherent argument about what Microsoft is doing with Windows 11. We need to know how many of the 1.3 are on 5th mm. or 6th or 7th gen processes or their AMD equivalents? And we we don't know. This is something so, you don't really see anywhere. Yeah. You know? you know who knows? Microsoft knows, right? Because of the yep. telemetry that they get from Windows. They know mm -hmm. which versions of the processors have it. Yes, they do. And what is But the PC makers that? might not. Right? Nothing. Right? They'll never tell us that. So. There's also, yeah. and this is risky for Microsoft... It's creating an impression that Windows 11 is for business and not for well, home users. It's for new new computers, is how I would say. Because honestly, yeah. a lot of businesses, yeah. even with new computers, are just going to stay on 10 because they don't want to retrain people. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? But for instance, you know the uh, you know the ability to put it on an, an incompatible computer, they kind of imply is for IT professionals. Mm -hmm. and, oh, uh, and TPM, I don't. I think is mostly seen as an enterprise bit of hardware. I mean, I don't need TPM right. on my home computer. They don't even allow, I mean, they didn't have BitLocker on Windows Home, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, that's fair. They don't, well, they don't have the ability to create BitLocker right. discs on Windows Home and right. actually access them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, look, I, that kind of differentiation between product SKUs has always been kind of arbitrary, and a lot of this Windows 11... Well, I understand, in, in Microsoft's mind, arbitrary. maybe, but... Um, in the end user's mind, I think there's going to be this kind of sense that, oh yeah, this is the biz, this is for business. Mm. I mean, that's I'm getting thing, that sense. You know, <laughs> the thing I, end I, I users don't need something. TPM. Well, no, you know, you know what'll change. A tough one. That, I, I don't think Microsoft sees it that way. I mean, look at these widget things they're rolling out to Windows 11, right? Like a lot of them are very consumer focused, right? Okay, and they're that's saying, true. Okay. Those are only coming to Windows 11, you know, like the family safety oh, widget you're right. and this, the MSN Yeah, they, news, they really right? want this to look like it's a, a family. They do. I, they, they they, do. They're trying to reach an audience of people who have kind of forgotten about the PC. Maybe they've mm -hmm. been reacquainted with it because of the pandemic. 
but they've been using iPhones and iPads and Android devices of whatever kind. And this thing looks more like that, doesn't it? It the start yeah. menu and the the centered stuff, and it, it it has kind of a mobile OS vibe. It looks a lot like Chrome. Do OS do right? um, do uh, end users benefit from TPM? Yeah, of course they do. But uh, you know, you get it. Microsoft never did. How? <laughs> That's another thing. You know, Microsoft started locker? talking. about because of all of the security, the hardware backed security uh, okay. stuff that you get from it, right? Okay. You can always, any security feature that can be backed by hardware is going to be more secure than the software based version. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the secure on so, the wave idea. And, but remember, yeah. they talked TPM, no one had heard of TPM until Longhorn. This, is, this was the conversation mm -hmm. they had in October 2003. Um, when they first introduced Longhorn, you know, in addition to all of the visual enhancements and all the other stuff they were doing, a lot of it had to do with TPM. And back then it was like, oh, you're trying to cut out Linux. And, you're, you know, there was all these complaints about that back then. Um, you know, UAC came out of this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but again, I, I just feel like with Windows 11, they're trying to turn this paper promise into a hard reality. And it's going to take a few years. It's amusing to me that Windows 10 ultimately, for all the questions about support life cycles and what does it mean for the life cycle of the device and blah, 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 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. By the time this thing is, actually, it's going to be 11 years, I guess, but, you know, roughly 10 years. You know, basically the same as every major Windows version before it, um, at the end of the day, you know, Windows 11, most people be able to run that thing for up to 10 years. Um, but, you know, I, I again, I, th I really think the goal is to come out on this out of this on the other side with a more secure platform that's hardware backed. You know, Android and iOS over time have gotten security chipsets that have made those systems more secure. And over time, the older systems without them just kind of go out of market. You know, PCs, because of their longevity, partially, tend to be, and, and frankly, because we use mobile devices more, just tend to be used more. So we have older devices, we just tend to have more of them now. It's weird to me that people don't think anything is spending a thousand bucks a year on a new phone. But the notion of buying know, a new right? PC, which they need to get work done, is like the most offensive thing they've ever heard <laughs> in their life. Um, I don't know. I see both sides of it. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking Microsoft sides. I, I certainly, I hope no one thinks that. But <laughs> No, no. but you, you know, you're, you're bringing up an interesting point about buying new PCs, right? So I've seen a lot of people make this argument too. So Microsoft's telling us we need to buy a new PC at a time when there are chip and component shortages and it's hard to <laughs> buy true. a new PC, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And <laughs> it's terrible for the environment. If your PC works, why are you going right. to just throw it away, right? Right, right. okay. I hear you. I um, mean, but their answer. So those to that two arguments, be, you're kind of like, eh. right? But they could just say you can use Windows 10. And again, Windows 10 is not a slap to the face like Windows 8 was. I think that's an important point. That's, like I said, it's not one I came up with, but it's it is there is a good fallback strategy for those people that can't or won't, or don't want yeah. to, whatever it is. Right. Um, upgrade their hardware. Agree. Right. When, and I agree with you. I think somebody, Stardock, someone, is going to create a skin that makes Windows 10 look like Windows 11, That's the right, opposite yeah. of yeah, what yeah, Stardock's doing, yep. right? Yep, and be all kinds um, of stuff. right, then people will be like, oh, wait, so this looks like Windows 11. Why do I need Windows 11? It's Windows 10. It's fine. I already sure. am using that. And it looks nice. Okay. It's all, I'm all set, right? <laughs> no, I, uh, there's something to that. I mean, and then uh, look, I mean, uh, this wasn't the goal, but I also think they're going to drive people to rival platforms. Um, there's a lot of people who just don't need PCs anymore because they are doing most of their computing on mobile devices. Mm -hmm. Apple's got these incredible M whatever chipsets now, and those computers are not as expensive as they used to be. Chromebooks are getting better and better. And uh, even Linux, uh, which you know doesn't have much of a position on the desktop, is still a viable option for anybody who is a little technical probably still, but... Um, runs mostly web apps, but needs those occasional native apps to put them over the top. They have high quality web browsers on Linux. So, I, you heard it here they, first, everyone. Paul yeah. is telling you to go to Linux. Well, so I would I would be here a we are. circumspect about that conversation, but it would <laughs> more here of we a. Are. I'm just saying it exists. <laughs> it exists. Yeah. It's By the thing. way, new slogan for Windows 10. It's not a slap in the face. <laughs> that's, that's right. Question mark. Paul Thorat says it's, it's not a slap in the face. Right. You're going to see some ad for Linux somewhere with, with Paul's pictures <laughs> recommending it. Like. Even Paul Thorat wants you to use Linux. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, I think it's important to pay attention to what's going on elsewhere. If you don't like what's going on with the thing yeah. you're using, um, 
It's too bad. I mean, that's the kind of the argument app people are giving about Apple's. You know,、mm -hmm. it's not a monopoly. If you don't like what Apple's doing in the, you know, in the、oh、app God, store, you can、different. go to Android. So, but I don't think. Yeah, because you're gonna love what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you find out what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Pretty sure their their app store policy is a link to Apple.com. It's, it's whatever <laughs> Apple does. We'll copy that. You know, we'll do、yeah. that. We'll copy that.、Mm. Um, if if、uh, my theory is true. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that Microsoft is just trying to jumpstart PC sales, then we would see some sort of indicator that PC sales were not doing well,、yeah. right? Or right. about to. Well, or, well, yeah, comparatively, right? So, one thing、uh, most people probably recall, <laughs> right?、Uh, the year before the pandemic was 2019, I believe, was the year where PC sales finally kind of plateaued, for lack of a better term. They were falling for several years before that every year. And I don't know what a reverse plateau is, <laughs> kind of a, a plateauing on the boat, whatever that is. <laughs>、um, and we saw a little, we call them flat sales. We saw every once in a while you'd have a quarter, it was like 1.9% sales gain year over year. You know, okay, fine.、Um, the pandemic changed things for sure. And one of the things, you know, we kind of look at this year, not that the pandemic is over, <laughs> thanks everybody、mm -hmm. for all your hard work on that, <laughs>、um, but obviously things are a little different this year than they were last year. So, Um, the PCs that people wanted or needed to work from home had, had already been acquired, right, by this point. I think, I, you know, so PC sales are kind of normalizing. And that's, you know, we'll need the full year to kind of see what that looks like. But for now, I was interested to see that、uh, Dell and HP both released their latest quarterly sales. These are companies that don't, that have, you know, like people have like fiscal years and fiscal quarters that don't map to a calendar year, and that's fine. But at least the quarters are kind of the same. In other words, they're, You know, October、mm -hmm. through December or January through、uh, March or whatever.、Um, these two companies don't do that. They have <laughs> quarters that don't map to anything that you would call a quarter, but they are three month periods. So they just released their quarterly、uh, sales. And both these companies are predominantly PC makers, especially、uh, HP. Two thirds of their revenues come from PCs and one third come from printers.、Um, P HP's、uh, the second biggest PC maker in the world. Their sales were flat year over year、uh, in the most recent quarter. Um, you could see that as good, by the way. I mean, last year they were up artificially, right? Yeah, it could、um, have been worse. I mean, flat's not so bad. It's not so bad. And,、um, you know, looking at it, they're seeing、um, better consumer sales. The、uh, consumer PC sales were up 3%. Commercial PC sales were down by 1% year over year. Total units were flat again.、Uh, portable sales were up 2%. Desktop, pills,、uh, desktop PC sales fell 7%. Okay, so that's. I, that's kind of the thing I expect to see. Dell was a little bit of an outlier. Dell is more,、uh, a lot more oriented toward、um, businesses. And they actually saw, let me see if I can find this thing.、Um, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, actually, their PC group, the Client Solutions Group, had revenues that were up 27% year over year.、Um, the majority of that, and it's over two thirds, it's like three quarters of that came from sales to commercial customers, not to consumers. And that business grew 32%. <laughs> so I, I think that's, I don't, I don't know how to view that. I mean, I, I feel like consumer and commercial PC sales both went up during the same quarters last year in particular.、Um, a lot of companies were buying computers for individuals, a lot of individuals buying computers for themselves so they could work at home. I think there was a lot of both.、Um, but apparently, I, this suggests to me that, for, for at, least, at least for Dell, That their commercial, you know, the business PC sales are, are actually doing great.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't, know、mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. But Dell is not, I mean, Dell's、uh, probably the number three PC maker. And they're not really that close to Lenovo or、uh, HP. I mean, Lenovo and HP together pretty much dominate the PC industry. So <sighs> I, think that, I think this ties into this conversation we had about、mm -hmm. Windows 11. October 5, why that date? What are they trying to accomplish here? And I think it has a lot to do with getting this thing out in time for the holiday season because if they can, if they can have a, like a good holiday quarter, that in some ways would save 2020 with regards to year over year comparisons with、uh, 2019. Um, because again, you know, sales last year were artificially high. So、um, I don't, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know that Windows 11 is going to have a huge impact on the PC market. I, I just don't, I feel like those days are kind of over.、Mm. Hmm. I don't know. But, you know, we'll see. I could be wrong.、Hmm. I usually am.
Just ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Moving, uh, moving right along. Uh, but before we leave the Windows 11 topic. Oh, yes. The one thing we have not discussed uh -oh. is last week's new build because we did get oh, yeah. a new build. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us all about it. Yeah. So the biggest thing in it was this new widget that Microsoft calls the Microsoft 365 widget. So widgets are these things that slide in from the side. There's some for like MSN News and Bing and there's one for family safety. And now there's this one for Windows 365 that's going to let you see at a glance all your work-related things if you're signed in with Azure Active Directory. So you can see like your recently opened documents, list of recordings from company meetings, and probably other things to come that have to do with, I bet Yammer is going to get in there somehow. <laughs> and yeah. Sure. <laughs> so um, I, I'm actually interested to see this because I was kind of totally writing off widgets as like, uh, who cares? It's a bunch of weird consumery stuff that I don't want on my work PC because I, I do consider my PC a work device. And I do I do yeah, some consumer Joe, tasks, but I consider where, where it a work Where are you going to find out news about the celebrity that looks great I in know. bikini? This is Kim Kardashian's <laughs> new eyelashes. Is, is, is this happened happen to you too? Up. I thought it was just me. No, no. This is every every other no. story is some I celebrity looks great gossip. in a bikini. I, I, what has happened? I thought yeah, it was yeah. just me. Maybe they knew my no. predilection, but no, no, it's all of us. No. It's awful. It's where they sell all the ads, right, is all that kind of stuff. And Taboola well, and, by and the all way, that kind of stuff. The, I, right? I just, I'm doing a series yeah. of posts about like the new Windows 11 features, and I just wrote about widgets. I don't put this in the notes yeah. because who cares? But the one interesting thing about widgets is, and we've this as everyone has suspected all along, this thing is really just a vector for Bing and MSN. Right. right. And Edge, yeah. as it turns out, because if you click mm -hmm. on any of those widgets, I don't <laughs> care what thing you've created, you know, Launches set as edge. your default browser, yeah, yeah. it opens an Edge. And, and those searches as a search it. bar, <coughs> well, I, I, apparently there are unsupported ways to change it. I haven't looked into this yet, but there's nothing in the UI for sure. You can't. Look, I, I feel yeah. like if I set my browser as the default, that's what should open. But I mean, nope. I'm obviously an imbecile. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting, you know, if you Chrome, Firefox, uh, whatever browser, yeah. um, and you click on one of those things, it, your edge is opening up. And so you've become an yeah. edge user. Congratulations. You're going to, you're going to factor mm -hmm. into whatever milestone number they provide down the road. And I, God, are we still doing this? Really? This is, this, yep. we have we to sure fool are. people into using the products <laughs> and services. It's too bad. Yep. I know. I know. It is too bad. Otherwise though, that build Team ch Teams chat got a whole bunch of new additional languages um, added in for support in the in the new languages. Otherwise, lots of fixes, tons of fixes, known issues. Um, so that kind of shows me that, like, yeah, the dev cycle's pretty much done. You're just doing kind of mi more minor things um, and things that are right. peripheral to the core operating system itself. They're done. They're done with Windows 11. They'll never yeah. say it RTM'd, but yeah. We're we're at that point. It is literally so. shipping in one month. A week, a one <laughs> month, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll call it almost five weeks. Okay, so because of the this is one of the the longer Wednesday or you mm -hmm. know the way the month is structured, but it's yeah. it's it's just not that far in the future, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a whole industry that has to get going, shipping boxes around the world, <laughs> and I mean. I that, like you said they're not going to announce this, but this week's build certainly next week's build has to be mm. what we used to be called RTM, even though they'll never. But you know, that. you know what? Like uh, thinking about this, like when you buy a new PC now, it almost never ships with the latest version of Windows, right? Almost never. Yeah. And yep. the for one of the first thing is, things it does by itself is it runs a bunch of updates and and suddenly your operating system's upgrading to the latest version of Windows 10, right? So they That's could true. do this with Windows 11 also. They could just sh keep shipping the PCs they have. And then when you actually install, you know, set it up out of the box experience, it installs Windows 11. So I, I, you're right. and I, But you'd like to think with a major platform like Windows that there would be some quality bar for the version yeah. that goes out on a computer. Mm -hmm. 
No, I, yep. I, again, you, well, I you would. Old, but no, because it's a much <laughs> it nicer like experience. A- yeah, it's a way better experience when you get a brand new, beautiful, shiny yeah. PC, turn it on. You want it to have Windows 11 on it, especially if it says it on the sure. packaging somewhere, right? Well, it will. You it will just be some, what I would, you, yeah. you know, in the past I've referred to as a pre release version of it, but. Yeah, You know, I think the reality is, as you get cumulative updates over time, including right away, and mm-hmm. then every month after that, we're going to eventually arrive at mid-2022 and some mm-hmm. version of Windows 11 that no one will acknowledge, but will be the version that, frankly, should have yeah. been 1.0 with the full feature set, you know. Mm-hmm. But then we'll just keep going. That's the thing. I mean, it, it just mm-hmm. never sits still. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I still have a hard time with that for some reason. But All right. Let me take a break. Uh, when we come back, you it's not in your notes, but Microsoft has announced a hardware event for Surface. It is. Right? It's, it's in there. It's, it's in there. there. Did I miss it? Far down. It's subtle. It's at okay. the bottom. We have an uncertainty <laughs> section. It's in there. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about that. Uh, there is an Xbox section. I did notice that. Didn't miss that. And, uh, and uh, a lot more still to come. In fact, a big promotion. <laughs> or is it? I don't know. You can explain. Uh, I do want to take a break right now and talk about Red Hat and Linux for Paul. No, no. Although Red Hat <laughs> is the big Linux provider. But they also do some great podcasts. We've talked before about Command Line Heroes. They've got a new one just came out that I really like called Compiler. Uh, hosted by Angela Andrews and Brett Simino. It's really fun. It's really an interesting idea. I'm guessing that what happened is they're sitting around the table and saying, you know, we always get these, you know, the 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 company uh, Discord or Matrix or whatever they use. Uh, we, there's always these questions, and people like to weigh in. And we have polls and stuff. Maybe they make a good podcast. And I think that's what they did. They turned it into compiler. Technology can, as we all know, be big, bold, bizarre, and complicated. Compiler unravels industry topics, trends, and things you've always wanted to know about tech through interviews with the people who know it best. On their show, you'll hear a chorus of perspectives from the diverse communities behind the code. It starts with a question, and then Compiler brings together a curious team of red hatters to tackle the big questions, uh, like what is technical debt? What are tech hiring managers actually looking for? That's what I'll definitely listen to. Do you have to know how to code to get started in open source? Uh, the first episode, I, which I listened to uh, end to end, which isn't so hard, they're about 20 minutes, but I was fascinated. They got, they got a lot in. Should managers code? And they talked to Red Hat's CFO, and she says, well, I, you know, I spend very little of my time, you know, 20% working on code. And then another manager says, oh, no, I hate managing. (laughs) I code all the time. And they just talk about the pros and cons of each with some great recommendations. You'll hear from a manager who learned that supporting his team to fix the problem rather than doing it himself, which is always the temptation, isn't it, Uh, might be slower but can lead to better results. A managerial position, you know, is a, is a big step. And I think there are a lot of coders who say, I don't want to become a manager because I like coding. But then there are a lot of managers who have stepped back. It started, this basically started as an internal uh, email thread at Red Hat and blossomed into a much deeper discussion and a fascinating conversation about career growth, what can get caught in its wake. I love this one. Have you ever walked into an interview and been asked to work through a coding problem on a whiteboard? It's pretty much what happens these days, right? If you were hired, how much of your time do you actually spend in front of a whiteboard solving coding problems? <laughs> so uh, there, there's a great one. How do you interview? This is one of the other questions. How do you interview for a technical position? Red Hatters cast a skeptical eye toward the dreaded whiteboard interview, but discover it can have some real benefits. Talk to people who actually do it, who have gone through it as the uh, victim, so to speak. Uh, brand new. First episode just dropped uh, uh, August 5th. I would suggest going and downloading and then subscribing so you hear every one of them. Listen to Compiler on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you get your podcasts. We'll also include a link on this episode's show page, uh, on on Windows Weekly's show page. So you can just click that link directly. And uh, high recommendation. I always like to be able to recommend other people's podcasts. This is a great one. And, uh, And they do, Angela and Brent do a really good job on this. Compiler. From Red Hat. Learn more at red.ht slash 
twit, red.ht slash twit. Okay. 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 This is a jam-packed show. A lot of news from Microsoft this week. I know, week. right? Yeah. Panos has been promoted. <clears throat> <laughs> Panos, who was the, sub, the title of last week's episode, Panos Paint, <laughs> right. is now uh, Panos, what do they call it? The leadership team? The senior SLT, leadership team. S senior leadership team. Ooh, that's nice. a good sandwich, yep. too, the SLT. Is he going to yeah. does he change his uh, responsibilities elsewhere? No, he's still going to be in charge of uh, Windows, right? Right, in charge of Windows client and Surface. Um this, the way they announced this was super weird. Yet another weird announcement by Microsoft. They they told Bloomberg about this. And so I went to the, the website that they have for the senior leadership team and clicked on it. And they had removed the, that website. So that website doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. <laughs> uh, by the way, a very useful t tool for all of us yeah, in the, the press. Yeah, very useful. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So I went back and I'm like, hey, um, did you guys change the name of that website or move it somewhere? They're like, oh no, we just decided we're not doing that anymore because we're, we're just doing, as of July 1, we're just doing what we have to do for SEC reporting and we don't have to provide say, I, all I, those I, names. I don't think SEC requirements have changed. I think companies have been pushing <laughs> the limits of what they can yeah. get away with and yeah. we've arrived at this place 20 years later where they just don't tell us anything anymore. Still a publicly traded company last time I, I, asked, I checked, but <laughs> it's, it's very yeah. strange to me. I know, I know. So he's he joins a a group that, as far as we know, has people on it like Scott Guthrie and Jason Zander, um, Amy Hood, Brad Smith, Chris Young, who's the head of business development. So now Panos is in this inner circle that meets weekly and talks directly to Satya and gives him advice. This is a big deal, right? Things. I mean, this this must make yeah. you know this is a real is. pat on the back. And also, well, also gives you an ear directly to the CEO, and you're privy to the inner circle communications and thinking. conversations. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. I think you're in the room important. where it happens, as they say. I know. Yeah, but right. uh, for people who care about Windows, this is a big deal because Windows has not had a direct representative with the ear of the CEO yeah. for a couple of years. Really? Now, which is a very strange situation. Huh. Um, Terry... Myerson was on the SLT back in the day. Mm -hmm. when, and when he left, there was no one, actually, there was no one directly responsible for Windows. Uh, Just Windows Rajesh, Calendar, right? Rajesh, Rajesh Ja. Right? Um, and, um, and there was, and that, you know, anyway, so now Panos has taken over Windows and, um, and now he's on the SLT. So I, I think this speaks to Microsoft waking up and suddenly realizing that Windows is still important and because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's been part of that. So I, you know, for, for, like I said, you know, for him, I guess it's a big deal for, for us. I, it's a big deal too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I guess. I yeah. I guess. Yeah. No, I think it's good. I, they keep saying windows is back, baby. Well, you got to prove it by, by actually giving sure. it some power in your organization. It's more it's like really windows back. is back sort of. And then in mid 2022, right. it'll be back a little bit more. Um, yeah, we're working yeah. toward it. Yeah. That's good though. It's good. I like I like that they're paying attention to Windows. Yeah. Of course. I hated it when they weren't. Yeah, otherwise we'd be doing Linux Weekly, you know, and there's already the untitled <laughs> Linux show. So we don't need two Linux shows on Twitter. Linux Weekly. <laughs> I love your response uh, in the Discord. Mary Jo is becoming the queen of uh, <laughs> animated GIFs when somebody said, maybe Paul could host the untitled Linux show and Mary Jo's posted a little picture of a young girl. <laughs> right. Like, no, no, no. I also would have expected <laughs> that guy from Jurassic Park, you know, on the Unix machine going, no, no, no. No, no, no. I don't. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we won't make Paul do that. <laughs> Although I was I thinking, be. actually, I was thinking if Paul decides he wants to try Linux, it'd be fun to do at least a short series of shows yeah. with Paul, like, Going, the what Linux the hell idiot. is this all the, about? The, the, yeah, we'll the call it the Linux idiot or Linux. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Linux. Yep. Um, hey, um, I noticed there's no ads in this thing. How do I? Fix where do that? I? Where do I turn on the ads? I come from Windows. Um, <laughs> how do I know? How do what I turn game? on user tracking and, uh, <laughs> and advertising. Is that a thing? I just well, I just want it to be familiar. <laughs> Uh, the Linux idiot. I don't know, Paul. 
There may be some Could be demands. a new pick of the week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, uh, there, right. Let's see, what else? There, there, were, other, uh, there were other Microsoft uh, announces. They, uh, they went to the White House, Satya Nadella did, yep. along with Tim Cook and uh, Andy Jassy, C new CEO at Amazon, mm -hmm. and um, Sundar Pichai, Sundar Pichai mm -hmm. from Google. All the, it, mm -hmm. you know, somebody pointed out, it's interesting because mm -hmm. Biden met with the CEOs. Notice nobody in the intelligence community was at that meeting. Um, <laughs> it really was more a mark, um, kind of a marketing kind sure. of a, you know, sure. we're going to work harder to stop ransomware. Kind of a meaning. Well, Although I mean, there's been kind of a there was a commitment, right? right? Yeah, and, and and Google and Microsoft in particular both made specific commitments with regards to um, some big bucks. With, yeah, yeah, and and mm. in Microsoft's case, investing twenty billion dollars over the next five years, um, which is a what uh, quadruple on their cybersecurity spending. Google's going to go up four x um, ten billion. Over the next five years, yeah, it's kind of. Amazing. I wonder what this really means. Right? Well, um. <laughs> we're buying more ads uh, on the Super Bowl so that uh, don't. It's all Windows Eleven, baby. That's yeah. how we're going to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean because what what they do when they make these big announcements, like you know, LinkedIn is now a ten billion dollar business. They move things around, right? right? And they're like, okay, so now we're spending twenty billion on security. Put this over here. But, but, it's not like but commercial crowd is moving around. <laughs> Ransomware is yeah. bad. For Microsoft, very bad. It's, it's terrible, good. and uh, yeah. it would be well, you know you know it's especially terrible. This is the thing. It, it's not um, you know uh, someone attacks a nuclear power plant or an electrical grid or blah 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 whatever it is. The story is always hackers you know may find a vulnerability in exchange. <laughs> you know yeah. it's always tied back to Microsoft. Yeah, unfortunately, and I think yeah. Uh, yeah it behooves them to try to get ahead of that. Yeah, for sure. Doesn't look. It's not a good yeah. look. Yeah, it's, uh, no, and Microsoft, I'm going to talk about this more in the enterprise pick, but they haven't had a very good summer on the security front. No, they have not. <laughs> but they figured out uh, printing. We got printing now, so. Uh, know. Is that even <laughs> fixed? That That's not no, even fixed, it right? keeps, it, They have not had any <laughs> luck fixing that. It's just been. It's fixed. You just can't print it unless you're an administrator. <laughs> yeah, don't don't print. Right. That's it. You as long as your print. printer's disabled, it's fixed. <laughs> yeah, Windows yeah. NT was the most secure platform in the world as long as you didn't connect it to the internet. <laughs> right. I mean, we, there's an answer to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oy, oy, oy. Um, so what's this surface event? What's the story? Yeah, well, good question, right? We, we know very little. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's September 22nd, which is a Wednesday. Right. 11 a.m. Eastern. So it'll be right before Windows Weekly that day. So um, we'll actually have something new to talk about. We will. And uh, we don't know what they're going to announce. All, that, all it said in the invitation we got today was um, that they'd be talking about new devices and Windows 11, but... That said, we do think this is where they're going to announce the Surface Duo 2 also, unless they have a separate event for that. It doesn't, doesn't make sense, really, to have a completely separate event for that. Uh, going to be virtual. Anybody can watch. Like, there's a public-facing website that's open right now, and it has a picture of a device that looks kind of like a Surface Pro or a Surface Pro X on it. Well, uh, and it just says, join right us there. to see what's next. Yeah. It was yes, funny when they Service launched Pro. the site. Did you did you see when they launched the site this morning? It was blank. It just said save the date. And then at like an hour or two That's later, funny. this picture showed up on here. It's an it's actually an animated GIF. You can see little things floating on the picture. Um, <laughs> and it says save the date, September twenty second. It doesn't say anything else. And there's you know there's a lot of speculation about, out there about what we could see, but I don't I don't think we've seen a lot of really credible leaks well, other two. than the. Duo 2. Yeah, the right. Duo 2 and also the Go yeah. 3, which is supposed oh, yeah, to finally have a, a yeah. viable processor, right? A Core i3. Oh, yeah. that um, would be nice. But, I'd like that. I'd like I, the yeah. Go yeah. 4. Yeah. But I will, yeah. you know, here's the thing. I, I don't think there's a Surface product that doesn't need to be updated. I mean, I know. in many right. ways, if they don't, and they won't, right, update every single one of them. But they'll talk about yeah. their plans for Windows 11. I think that will be a big part of it. And of that course, will, these new computers sure. will all ship with Windows 11. Um, I I would love to see them update the entire line, you know? Mm -hmm. And it I could know, be Surface as simple Book, as... right? Surface Book Surface is Surface Book so is horribly out of date right? by this point. Yep. Yeah. You, you could say, I mean, Surface uh, Laptop is always kind of a gen behind on the AMD processors in particular. Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of nice to see them. 
even if they did something like we're going to keep calling it Surface Laptop 4, we're going to update the AMD version. Mm -hmm. Obviously, 11th gen is still good, um, but it's going to ship with Windows 11, you know. Yeah. In, in that case, you don't have to even update the hardware. But yeah, Surface right. Book, that thing's out of date. Surface Studio hasn't been updated in forever. Um, yeah. Surface Pro needs to get that Surface Pro X design for sure. We've been calling yeah. for that for two mm -hmm. years now. Um, Surface the one Go thing I the one thing I don't think we're going to see is Neo. Like a lot of people are asking, what about the Neo, yeah. the dual screen Windows? I, I, we're hearing nothing about that being part of this. I've given up on Neo, alas. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a new yeah. Matrix movie. They'll do. It. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what I wonder. Okay, uh, on the last earnings call, they made a huge deal out of chip shortages, component shortages, how they couldn't get enough parts to make PCs. Right. So, what does that mean for a big like refreshing your whole product line or not refreshing yeah. your whole product line. And Microsoft right? is not exactly the world's biggest PC maker, so they're not right. really first in line for components either. Mm -mm. Look, I, and not to be a jerk about Surface, I mean, these guys are have always been on previous gen tech. They don't support Thunderbolt still, which is laughably crazy in 2021. But um, if they move forward with, not all of them, but most of their products, the same design, but new, you know, Windows 11. I mean, I think mm. it's not the end of the, the you know, the, it's not the worst thing that could happen. But yeah, you know, sir, there's some there's some of those things that really need to be updated. Surface Book is probably the worst one. Um, yeah. Although they probably don't sell a lot of Surface Book, so I don't know. I don't think Studio will ever be updated again. I feel like they've dropped it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, though, yeah, I, right. There isn't a big market for that kind of product. No. Studio needed to be updated the day they shipped the first one. It did. Yep. It did. In fact, I think you guys did just that, didn't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> did you put a? Mm -hmm. you I wish farther, we could put uh, a faster processor. Yeah. But yeah, we put a faster yeah. hard drive. SSD, right? I yeah, think. I love um, the idea of Studio. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did too. They never yeah. gave it the hardware yeah. it, it would have made it sing. Yeah. Hmm. Well, okay. So September, September 22nd. I don't know if you guys want to cover it live and then I have guess we will. weekly. <laughs> Is that a Wednesday? Yeah. Yep. Wednesday at okay. 11 a.m. Eastern. For you. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I know. Yes, Make Micah do it. Make Micah Make do Micah it. Make Micah do it. A, he likes Make the Micah. Elvis. Come on. He Make does. Micah he? do it. He uh, likes Elvis. Micah likes it. Do it. Hey, like, Micah. He Micah. likes it. <laughs> Micah likes anything. <laughs> He'll eat anything. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe we will. I don't know. I'll, no, I'll come in. Uh, we'll have to move uh, Floss Weekly, but that's a... Okay, so that's a Wednesday. And then yeah. if you want to join me, you can as well, of course. Unless you're... It's not going to be an in-person event. Mm -mm. No. No. Um, and then we'll do Windows Weekly that following week. You know, I th that following uh, l later that day. I mm -hmm. feel yep. like Apple's event is going to be the 14th. And I think that Microsoft is thinking the same thing otherwise because if apple's event was the day before that would oh, be God. bad it would just be lost yeah yep. it would so yeah. i'm thinking microsoft is betting that apple's event will be either the uh eighth and since we haven't seen any and when you say apple event you're talking iphone apple watch iPhone not 13 like, like max mm -hmm. yeah yeah so iPhone. they, so they all be nicely relax. distance from whatever yeah. Mac event although the duo like that, despite yeah. everything they say mm -hmm. is a phone yeah it is. <laughs> no, see, Leo, I feel like we've been over this before. <laughs> it is a phone. <laughs> and it is competing yeah. with the iPhone. I know I know it's not, but it is. I know. So, um, yeah. anyway, so Apple event on the 14th, we will be, if there is one, uh, they may also not have one. They had one in October last year. And How then uh, Microsoft and on the 22nd. Um, all right, you want to do Xbox? Sure, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Actually, Mary. This Joe one's, Foley. This, one's <laughs> this one's really short. Um, uh, it's, it's September today, as we record this, September first. So we now know the games we're getting. The first set of games we're going to get this month on Xbox Game Pass, and the, month, the games we're going to get through Xbox. God, I'm losing my mind. Games for Gold as well. So the interesting thing about the Game Pass games is they only go through September 10th or 9th, actually, which is the first kind of third of the month. That suggests to me we're actually going to get three drops of new games this month, which has happened once before. Um, usually they do two. And 
There's some big ones in there. Final Fantasy 13 uh, is coming actually tomorrow. That's pretty. And the Surgeon Simulator. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, not just Surgeon Simulator. Surgeon Simulator 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one, you actually kill people if you yeah. don't do it right. Yeah. Um, so that's happening. And then uh, Games with Gold. I mean, for me personally, nothing dramatic. The, the two older games are actually Xbox 360 titles, which is kind of interesting. And then the two more recent games, uh, which I think are Xbox One games, I'm not 100% sure, are War, Warhammer, Chaos Bane, and Mulaka, <laughs> which is kind of an excellent name. Um, <laughs> Mulaka. Mulaka. The other thing I just wanted to touch on, though, is because this kind of happened as we were doing the show last week, and I just want to bring a little bit of clarity to this. I also want to complain again about Mary Jo breaking this news. How dare you? Uh -oh. um, no. <laughs> so... Uh, Halo Infinite, as we know, is launching December 8th, and that's going to happen across Windows, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. Um, so like I joked last week, it's actually 13 months late. We also know it's not going to have the complete experience. Um, what was it? Uh, Co-op, uh, single player, and Forge are coming sometime later, and you know they'll do, if not monthly, then certainly regular updates, as they do with a lot of games. So that's happening. Um, there is an Xbox Series X Halo Infinite limited, additional con limited Edition console, which is a bundle, actually. $550. Leo tried to buy it last week. It was already sold out. Sold out before um, it even was available. And I, yeah, and I have verified that that thing will ship November 15th without Halo Infinite. <laughs> like, you're going to have oh. to download it when it comes out. Yeah, I know. So it's kind of a weird... Um, now they're yeah, sending me to a retailer deal. instead of... Uh, yeah, right. That's how it went with the original consoles. Remember, yeah. you know, it's out of stock yeah, at Microsoft. But maybe Amazon, Best Buy, Target, or Walmart has more. Should I click all those links? What do you yeah, think, you Paul? What is the chance? Gone. No, I think they're gone. Come on, I've been through this before. I'm not. An the idiot. other thing that's Microsoft is shipping on November fifteenth is a new Xbox Elite wireless controller. This is the two hundred dollar, you know, controller. And Brad pointed this out to me. I didn't even realize this when it happened. Um, when Xbox Series X and S launched last year, they came with a new version of the Xbox wireless controller. Xbox Elite, the, there have been two generations of this controller. They both predate the Xbox X and S version of the controller. And this one is an older controller. <laughs> it's not even the new controller. So it has all the Elite stuff, you know, the ability to pop off the, um, you know, the paddles and the D-pad and all that and switch them out for different, uh, you know, styles. But it doesn't have like the share button uh, that comes on the new controller. It's like it's like the old. It's like two hundred bucks. So just so you know about it, I mean, I, 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 nobody listening to this is going to be able to buy the console, and probably no one's going to want to buy the Elite controller. But they are available, and they are shipping before Halo Infinite. And again, Mary Jo, seriously, if you ever do that again, I I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Scoop. Scoop. You know, somebody's going to keep you on your gaming toes. I'm happy to help. <laughs> That's right. Love it. I don't know why you ignored this Halo story, Paul, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're gonna, let's take a break. We've got a tip of the week coming up. Uh, we've got uh, beer coming up. You know, yeah. actually, no. We're going to do a cocktail this time. Yeah. How fun. Last chance. Last chance summer cocktail mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, the back of the book, as we call it. Before we talk about that, though, let me talk about our sponsor, Melissa. Uh, here we are, fourth quarter. And, you know, that customer list you had at the beginning of the year, it's uh, probably there's some inaccuracies in there. In fact, I'm going to bet there's a lot of them. 36 million address changes in 2020. 36 million. That means there are a lot of customers, your customers, who have moved or suppliers, or, you know, anybody you keep track of. 30% of customer da data goes bad every year. 30%. Well, Melissa can help. Having accurate customer data is crucial for the success of your business. Melissa's tools have helped maintain fresh address data for over 35 years, which explains why over 10,000 businesses trust the address experts. Melissa has a renewal rate of over 92%. That proves companies love Melissa. You will too. You'll be in that 92%. What can you verify? Everything. Names, addresses, emails, phone numbers. Melissa's global address verification service works in 240 plus countries and territories. You can do it on-prem. You can do it in the cloud. You can do it as a software as a service. 
You can do it. Uh, there's an API. They even have an FTP, a secure, a secure FTP site. <laughs> I love this. That you can uh, upload your address list to and then download it. Uh, all cleaned up, all freshened up. Melissa also has new uh, apps on iOS and Android. The Lookups apps. You can uh, play with it to search addresses, names, and more at your fingertips. Melissa's flexible deployment platform means you can you can have it any way you like it. Suit your preference, your business size, your budget. You can also add customer demographic information to your records, marital status, social media handles, and more. Melissa, of course, of course, treats your data with kid gloves. Security is paramount. They know it. And then they continually undergo independent security audits to reinforce their commitment to data security, privacy, and compliance requirements. You'll be glad to know they're SOC 2, HIPAA, and GDPR compliant. And what great support. If you sign up for a service level agreement, you've got 24-7 renowned support anywhere, anytime. Uh, Melissa is still supporting qualifying workers, by the way, and supporting communities during COVID-19. Your organization could qualify for six months of free service. Apply online at melissa.com slash twit. Also, congratulations to Melissa for being named a, a leader in address verification and data quality by G2 Crowd. That was in the spring of 2021. Bottom line, make sure your customer data is up to date. Don't waste time sending information to people that don't exist anymore it doubles to the same address and that kind of thing and by the way the api is great if you want to update your customer support portal try melissa's apis in the developer portal very easy to log on sign up and start playing in the sandbox 24 7 it's a great api get started today 1000 records clean free at melissa.com slash twit m-e-l-i-s-s-a melissa.com slash we thank them so much for the support of Windows Weekly. Now to the back of the book. Paul Thorat has his tip of the yeah. week. Yeah. So by the Brad way, is have, leaving me. Ha, yep, son of a... We now have <laughs> by the, we have album art for your new show. I just want to show okay. you this real quickly. Uh, it's called Linux for <laughs> Pauls. <laughs> hey? <laughs> hey? That's good. <laughs> Thanks to Tony Tech for that. Linux for Pauls. <laughs> huh? Should be like Linux for Polys. Polys. Linux for Polys. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> so Brad, the bastard, took a, took a job. Uh, sure. He's going to be at Stardock. As I asked Brad privately, you know, did you even consider what this would mean to me, you bastard? <laughs> you son of a... So, um, <laughs> heartless. Yeah, but, but. Um, we have a new addition to the team that, uh, not replacing Brad, this is in a completely different role, uh, who is Stephen Chapman, who is someone I've known for a long, long time as, nice. as Mary Jo. Super, super nice guy. Um, one of the things that he's really into, which is where he fits in nicely with uh, our website, is he's really, he collects what he calls rare, odd, and fun Microsoft memorabilia. I love it. And um, I made a really minor contribution to his collection many, many years ago when I was cleaning out my closet and got rid of my old Longhorn betas and all that stuff. Um, but he, if you, you got to check out the articles uh, he's already put up on the site. He I'm, did something I'm curious about, about this picture of you and him with the <laughs> Laker girls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's PDC 2009. I wanted to make sure I I, that the that. picture I used was sufficiently embarrassing uh, <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> uh, well, um, it establishes his bona fides anyway. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, What'd you send him? Yeah. What's that? What did you send him for his memorabilia? Oh, this is a long time. It was just uh, mostly Longhorn era stuff that I had. Um, nice. He has but he a, does a uh, lot of this. He has a, uh, a Twitter account called Beta Collector, Beta underscore yeah. Collector. Yep. And he follows me, so I better he follow has some, him. Huh? He has some incredible, incredible stuff. He does. He really does. Um, <laughs> and so this post he's had so far, I just incredible. And I get just, I'll just say this. I, I told him this privately and... Um, uh, people who know me, people who follow me on Twitter will certainly understand this. I, I complain about bad writing all the time. That's it, like a, if I could make money making fun of bad writing, I would be rich. But um, Mama Chan, he, oh, he, 
I, I, I think it was the second post, the, the intro to it. I read it. I, I actually called my wife over. You know, she's also a writer. And you can imagine the thrilling discussions we have about writing. But I said, let me just read this to you. <laughs> and she said, oh, did you write that? And I said, no, I didn't. But this is really well written. Like, And he's he's actually a really good nice. writer. Nice. Um, and so he's going to be writing about this kind of stuff. Not every single day, you know, obviously, but um, as, as often as he likes, actually. So. He's already put some awesome stuff up. It's really, really good stuff. So make sure you take uh, take a look at that. It's if you care about Microsoft and Windows and all that stuff, you're, you're going to be fascinated by some of his archives that he's now sharing with the world. Oh, I love this. Is that all he's going to write about? Is just like yeah, old yep. old crap. I mean, he's welcome to do whatever he wants. But that was yeah, I love was, it. Yeah, I mean, well, he's got this collection. Yep, mm -hmm. it's so Incredible. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people. It's funny. Yeah, people love that stuff. Yep. Um, it's just, it's, I guess, because it's nostalgic, it's fascinating. This Microsoft Assistant. There's all this stuff you've never even heard of. It was never too, announced that in happened the US. in other countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, yeah, yeah I love it's, it. No, it's love incredible. It. So, okay. Yeah, check that out. Welcome, stuff. Stephen. Um, I don't want Leo to go off on a, on, uh, in, on a bad direction on this one, but um, <laughs> so oh, as people have probably figured out, I've been kind of moving from browser to browser, oh, and no. that's part of something I'm writing or will be writing. I've only just started it, but um, just a series of articles about web technologies, and um, with an eye toward, I, I really feel like this is the direction that desktop apps kind of go in, and so I've been just looking at different browsers and you know, seeing how they behave and how they work with certain things. And by the way, uh, uh, Chrome 93 literally just came out today. And one of the, f I'm not going to be able to tell you what this is accurate, but one of the features that's in there is, yeah, something called uh, URL handlers. And this is just a way to let web apps, you know, link to things that, you know, previously would have required like a, um, like a native app. And there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Like one of the things I've been experimenting with is I write articles and I have to post them to, WordPress. If I do that from Word, the desktop native application, and you look at the source code of what I'm pasting in, it's completely clean. If I use Google Docs to write an article and I paste that in, it's full of span tags and lots of garbage. If I use the web version of Word and do the same thing, same thing, it's full of garbage. And so I'm trying to figure this out because I really feel like, I know this is a very special use case in that, in that example, but like web apps have to take these leaps to be on par with what's happening on the desktop and and you're starting to see that happen in different browsers in different ways and so I've been using um, Chrome for the past couple of weeks I have to say I actually kind of like it I know that's kind of weird I've been very anti Chrome over the years I would just say that if you're going to use Chrome and you know 65 percent of you do um, please take the time to block what Google is doing with tracking and uh, there are extensions you get that do that. Um, Privacy Badger, obviously, um, uBlock Origin, there's a bunch of them. So just do that kind of stuff. But there, there, there are things, like I've been using Firefox primarily for the past couple of months. There are two things in Firefox that I don't like. I think I identified one of them inaccurately a few weeks ago. One is the find in page functionality, which in most browsers, I guess Chromium browsers, is like a thing that pops up at the top, which to me is normal. Mozilla uses this thing they've had for probably a decade or more where it pops up in a like a pain in the status bar at the bottom. And I hate, I just hate that for some reason. But the bigger issue is actually the developer tools. And um, I don't use them in really a developer context all that much. But one of the things I often do is I have to find like a, a graphic in a web page. So for example, when Twit publishes Windows Weekly, there's actually an image in a particular folder, which is like Elroy or something. I know exactly where it is. That's available in Chromium-based browsers very easily. It's not available in Firefox. So even when I use Firefox, I find myself just booting up Edge or Chrome or whatever just to grab that graphic because it's so easy because I want to use it on my site when, you know, when I publish this, the, uh, the link to the show. So anyway, uh, don't worry. I'm not going Chrome full-time, but I am using it right now, and I realize that people are using it. And so I just wanted to say, if you are using it, um, you know, Practice safe browsing and block all that tracking, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't need any more victims. No. Gosh, no. Mary Jo Foley, time for your enterprise pick of the week. A couple weeks ago, I talked about Windows Server 2020, 
2022 launching and starting to roll out to the mainstream. And I, I said at the time, this is like the weirdest Windows Server launch I've ever seen because they didn't do any press about it. They didn't do any blog posts. They did nothing. Well, surprise, surprise. Today, September 1st, they announced Windows Server 2022 is now generally available. So I, being the thorn in the side that I like to be with Microsoft, I, I asked them, why did you wait two weeks? It was already available two weeks ago. And they said, we wanted to wait until it was in all of our distribution channels before we made a big deal out of it. Um, okay, maybe. Uh, the other question I had for them, though, which I've been asked here on the Discord server a few times, is, is there going to be a Windows Server 2022 Hyper-V product? So there's up till the most recent version of uh of Windows Server 2019, the last long-term servicing channel release, there's also been this free product called Hyper-V Server that lets you run virtual machines for free on-premises uh, in this particular SKU. You cannot believe how hard it was to get an answer from Microsoft about is there going to be one of these also in Server 2022. I, I finally found the answer buried in a support forum post, and the answer is no. Um, I guess that's why they didn't want to talk about it. Uh, there is not going to be Windows Server Hyper-V 2022. They're advising you, if you want that functionality, to go with Azure Stack HCI instead. Uh, so that's their hyper-converged infrastructure product, which is definitely not something uh, for mere mortals. It's for like enterprise users. It's got a very big footprint. Uh, there's a lot of uh, licensing around it. It's not something you would just spin up at home or in your lab and test VMs on for free. So yeah, there, sadly, I'm the one here to tell you that you're not going to get Hyper-V Server 2022, but you can now get Server 2022 in all of your usual Microsoft channels for enterprise users. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but that's not all. There's more. That's not all. I, I couldn't let this go by without making it a pick, even though it's not really a pick. It's kind of a warning post. <laughs> so I don't know if you all saw this, but Cosmos DB, which is Microsoft's NoSQL DB that they've had in market since 2017 and have pushed really hard to business users, it had a very major security breach that was just discovered at the start of August. Uh, something called Chaos DB was discovered uh, in Cosmos DB. And uh, even though Microsoft said almost no one was, if, if not no one was actually affected by this, anyone who has Jupyter Notebooks enabled on this Cosmos DB was definitely at risk. And in fact, the advice is if you're running Cosmos DB, you had a potential of being at risk. Um, so the advice on this is if you use Azure Cosmos DB, you probably want to go and regenerate and rotate your primary read-write Cosmos DB keys. If you haven't done that now, you probably should do it, even though Microsoft's downplaying it and saying nobody was actually affected. We already warned the customers who had Jupyter Notebooks enabled. But yeah, this was a pretty bad vulnerability. And like we said earlier in the show, it hasn't been a good summer for Microsoft on the security front. They've had the print nightmare stuff. They've had a lot of problems with Exchange yeah. uh, and proxy server Exchange bugs. Um, so yeah, just it's just a warning more than anything else for Enterprise Pick 2. If you have Cosmos DB running, make sure you take care and regenerate your keys. Yes. Yep. Now, uh, I'm going to guess that it's Paul yes. taking this next <laughs> segment. Normally the beer pick of the week, Paul Therott, probably thanks to Stephanie, has a cocktail pick of the week. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. A lot of people by now probably know that my wife is uh, into the whole mixology thing, and, and she is actually really good at it. And I know that pina colada doesn't sound like a complicated drink, but the thing is, she makes a perfect pina colada. And I'll tell you what the secret <laughs> is at the end. But the big, well, the big thing is you can use a pre-made mix. Obviously, that's a big deal. But she no. just makes it herself, and it, yeah. it just takes a few no. minutes. Yeah. So it's a cup of white rum, two cups of fro frozen pineapple in chunks, um, half a can of cream of coconut, not unsweetened coconut cream. Those are two different things we found. Uh, two tablespoons of lime juice and three cups of ice. Blend it all 
pour it, et cetera. But the big deal is she has a Vitamix blender, which she mentions here. Um, these are kind of expensive, but if you want to crush the ice and kill your hearing and get tinnitus, Vitamix is the way to go. <laughs> I actually, um, I have to warn Lisa. I'll say loud noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, close comes. the doors. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it could drill through like a diamond surface, but it's, um, yeah, it does the job. The, the trick to this, the thing that puts this over the top, is you have to have dark rum as well, and you add a splash oh. of dark rum to the oh. top of this thing, mm. along with a maraschino nice. tre- cherry. I am almost <sighs> addicted to this drink now. And By it is the, way, the perfect summer good. drink. Mm. If you can find it, and I we can mm-hmm. find it here, get okay. a real maraschino cherry, which is not the oh, bright yeah. red cherry you see in the bars, mm-hmm. uh, but is a darker cherry in a uh, marasca liqueur. Yeah. That's where it gets its name from, mm-hmm. is the marasca syrup. Right. It, those things... I could eat a jar of them straight out of the jar. <laughs> and then you'd be asleep for 36 hours. Oh, they're amazing. <laughs> and I bet you, you they would be that so makes, good with this. Uh, cherries for, or it makes, you know, we know people here who make, um, I'll call it hooch or moonshine hooch. or whatever. But, <laughs> I love it. Um, they make, uh, this guy, our friend of ours makes some really high alcohol content uh, cherry syrup. And um, that is what we use, but... I don't expect you to be able to find that unless you want to come to the Netherlands of nether regions of <laughs> Pennsylvania. Um, if you can find somewhere in a, some specialty store, maybe you're lucky enough yeah. to have a good grocery. Yeah. Mary Jo knows what I'm talking about. Spice stores like Kalustians in New yeah. York have, have that, like specialty so cooking good. stores. Yeah. I will look for this. So good. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's just the it, Luxardo makes them, the original Maris, Marischino. Cherry, these are the ones we get. We get. Yeah. yeah, look at this. Yeah. It looks like caviar. It is. It's it totally is. different. It's it's, the, it's like fake versus real, yeah. right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. You know, you probably can mail order them. Anthony but, just posted in the Discord a link. Oh, so nice. there you go on Amazon. <laughs> Anthony is also a mixologist. Quite quite a good mixologist. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. He yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, remember he made us those, yeah. each of us a special drink for a the holiday. specialty holidays. cocktail. It was so that was good. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Anthony. So uh, it's on Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can get them on yeah. Amazon. Mm. Mm. L-U-X-A-R-D. Paul's ordering right now. I can and, and <laughs> I, I am going to start making some pina coladas because mm-hmm. I like pina coladas. I you know yeah. what the problem with pina coladas is? They're so acidic Getting because of the, the pineapple. Oh, the pineapple. It actually uh, yeah. it eats your stomach I drink, lining. You can, you can, it can hurt your teeth. <laughs> yeah. No, pineapple like is it, actually, you shouldn't eat pineapple. <laughs> it's yeah. dangerous. Well, <laughs> very, very carefully yeah. for digestive reasons. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and wash your hands after you cut it. Oh, yeah. oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, there's something in there. Yeah, there's but enzymes. Boy, it's yeah. a kind of enzyme in it. So yeah, it'll so dissolve good. your yeah. stomach lining. But boy, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have no it's teeth. Delicious, it's though. good going down. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Uh, uh, okay, okay. What a show. <laughs> I've got to go out and get a, a maraschino cherry and a pina colada. I can tell you yes. that. Um, we do this show uh, of a Wednesday around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. I mention that because you can watch us do it live or listen live. There are streams available at twit.tv slash live. And if you're doing that, you should chat with us live. The wonderful folks in our uh, chat room. Uh, wait a minute. They're not, they're not where they usually are. Uh, but uh, you can you can take my word for it. They're there, chatting away at irc.twit.tv. They're not at my camera. Oh, they're there, they're there in the <laughs> camera switcher. Um, it, these these guys are good. These guys are good, and uh, and it's fun <laughs> while you're listening to chat with them. I also recommend <laughs> if you are a member of Club Twit, it's always fun. <laughs> there's a there's a picture of a. Uh, Stephanie, uh, it's always <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to join the uh, the club uh, Twit Discord server where there's uh, uh, always a party going on in there as well. Um, either way, <laughs> listening live, this has really kind of gone to town, hasn't it? Oh man, it they is. love their animated gifs. Let me just tell yeah. you. Uh, either way, it, <laughs> it is. <laughs> 
it is it is fun、uh, to listen live, but you can also listen after the fact. On demand versions of the show are available at twitch.tv slash WW for download. You can watch on the YouTube channel. The,、uh, all the videos are up there. There's a Windows Weekly YouTube channel.、Um, <clears throat> Let's see what else. Oh, yeah, podcast client. Of course, every, every, every phone should have their own podcast client. And I don't know which one you use, but you'll find Windows Weekly in all of them. Leave us a five star review if you think of it while you're subscribing and getting it automatically, instantly, the minute it's available.、Uh, you'll find Mary Jo Foley at ZDNet, all about Microsoft.com. Paul Therot is at Therot.com, T H U R R R O, double good. Do become a premium member because there are great,、uh, excellent special articles in there. Paul's book, The Field Guide to Windows 10, is available at leanpub.com. And did the tornado alert go off? Because I. No, but it is raining. I'm surprised you can't hear it. It is raining so hard. And、yeah. I am not going to let this prevent me from getting sushi today. I got to tell you. <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah, it's bad. I、uh, can see, probably can't see it. Yeah. The,、um, the chat room. Oh, the, there's something out there. Oh, look at that. You can look out the window. The chat room. Somebody in the chat room is in、uh, South Central、uh, Pennsylvania. He said、uh, all of our,、uh, at the office, all the tornado alerts went off on all of、oh, our、wow. phones. So、mm-hmm. keep, keep an eye out, Paul. We don't want you to blow、no. away to Oz. <laughs> no. Nobody wants that. Stay safe, stay warm, stay dry, and we will see you next week, all you dozers, on Windows Week. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I completely forgot. No wonder gonna, I'm not We、rich. get away from that. I forgot the dozers. Single handedly make that a thing. One day, I'm making dozers a thing. Yes, sir. Hey, you don't have to wait till the weekend to get the tech news you need. Join Jason Howell and myself, Micah Sargent, for Tech News Weekly, where we talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news.